This version of It's Eric Nagel has been modified from its original broadcast. Content has been edited to fit this platform. Believe none of what you hear and half of what you see. It's Eric Nagel. It starts now. Ladies and gentlemen of the universe, universe. the next voice you hear... It's Eric Nagel. All right. Thank you, Scott Shannon. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the program. I am Eric Nagel over there. If you see Jordan, say hello. There he is. Hi, Hi Jordan. everybody. How are you? I'm good. That was a, a fun trip down memory lane. Yeah, we'll get into uh, all the Dennis Leary stuff in just a second here. Giddles is going to, uh, he has his day job, so he'll be joining us uh, as soon as he can, as soon as he gets home, uh, he'll be with us here on the program. Do us a favor, subscribe, follow, like, whatever it is you do on all the social media platforms. We are there. Give us a follow there. Also, if you're listening to us on iHeartRadio, thank you on the app. Thank you very much. Uh, if you're listening to us on demand through Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts, uh, if you want to join us live when we do the show each and every week, you can uh, go over and uh, give a uh, subscribe, follow all that fun stuff to YouTube and our Twitch rooms all, also under the handle It's Eric Nagel. So many ways to find, watch the show, whether it's live or if uh, it's on demand. So this way you do not miss anything. Uh, like I said, Giddles will be joining us in just a minute. So why did we start with all the Dennis Leary stuff? Well, it's his birthday. Prepare to feel old if you were a child of the 90s like we were. Uh, Dennis Leary is 66. And that album, uh, when he... I don't know, he hit the scene in a couple different ways. He was there in the late 80s with MTV because he was doing stuff with Colin Quinn on Remote Control, which was Colin's mm. old. Uh, him and Ken Ober did a, a game show about television, which if the, you're going to reboot anything, bring that back. Bring back yeah, a TV show show. about TV shows and movies and all that fun stuff. Bring sitcom characters in like they used to do. Um, you'd have cast of the Brady Bunch and the Partridge Family and and uh, uh, some. Um, there was a couple others I'm spacing at the moment, but they, they would make appearances if it was a themed show or something. Bring all that yeah, back. Yeah, it was like re remote control and like Beat the Geeks were like my two favorites. I don't like, remember I just love watching Geeks. both of those. Yeah, it was like a it was like a game show where you had to go up against like nerdy geeky types that pretty much were knew, knew everything about like geek culture. So you had to like f go against them. I'll have to find what year it was, but right, that was a fun one for me. All right, I'll have to look that up. But remote control should come back. You have plenty of great comedians out there right now who would you know do great doing uh, skits and appearances and and things for the the game show. Um, the fact that was when he first kind of was blowing up when he really hit was the asshole song, which we just featured and the album No Cure for Cancer, which came out in 1993. And then he was doing all those uh, segments that we, we put together before the show um, bumpers, interstitial things between videos and, and commercials and stuff where he's just doing those rants about the uh, things that were pissing him off at the time. They should be doing more things like that because TV needs all the help it can fucking get. And I'm not talking about streaming service and stuff, but I'm saying broadcast television, cable television. You need something to get people back into watching this stuff, especially after God knows how long this uh, the strike's going to be. The, there's so many great comics out there who are great writers. If you just follow their Instagram accounts and you see some of the shit that they put out there and you go, this is these are great. They should be doing more than just this. Like somebody should have picked them up to do more stuff. Um, hire some of these comics, start doing those bumpers again. Go back to some of the stuff. Everybody loves 90s shit right now. Go back and, and steal some of the concepts. <laughs> Bring some of these, yeah, these big I mean, comedians sense. in or, or up and coming comedians who were going to write and do these little segments. Just, I mean, that's all it took. Look at what, what it did for Dennis Leary. We could do it for other comics nowadays because nobody's doing anything like that. Yeah, everyone could produce their own shit and put it online. But if you get a TV network behind you, it kind of works together. You're bringing your audience to them and they're paying you. So why not? Yeah, and it could bring people back to wanting to actually watch broadcast television because I think most of the time everyone's usually doing all the streaming services or the Hulu or right. something like that. No one's watching live television anymore. No. So to have that and not even and maybe DVRing not put that stuff. on the internet, yeah. yeah. So many people have stuff set on DVR and then they go and look. It's like oh, I got six episodes of this show I'm gonna watch. I'm just gonna hit delete, forget it, you know. And they clear out the <laughs> DVR or it just sits there forever. Uh, I want to point out if you're watching the uh, the live show on the audio, it doesn't make any sense. 
there's this Super Mario thing standing here where he's in the in the fire <laughs> suit. So after last year's uh, events where we had to rebuild the studio and, and, and um, remodel everything, a lot of stuff is still in storage. And I took another bin out of storage and I found this was in there. I forgot I even had it, but look how big this thing is. I'm just kidding. He's just staring at us. There's this. I got a Zelda I'm thing. Eyes. Yeah. And I got a uh, one of the uh, piranha plants coming out of the pipe. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I'll have to, uh, when I finish the rest of this, put them up somewhere and make it not look stupid. All right. Anyway, <laughs> Dennis Leary. So, yes, if you're feeling old, um, No Cure for Cancer came out in 1993. The Asshole Song was big. The Asshole Song was getting radio play. There's a censored version that was being played by, mm. um, I don't think Howard ever touched it because I don't remember anything Dennis Leary involved with, with Howard Stern, but there were morning shows around the country that were playing the asshole song. Um, and then depending, I guess, in the market they were in, they would beep the um, the ASS part when he's spelling it out. It would go beep, beep, mm-hmm. beep, H-O-L. And they'd say, it, you know, spell out whole, but they would beep the ass part. Um, other stations, other markets would play everything, but uh, when he said shit or fuck or whatever else he said in there that was an asshole, they um, censored those but let the asshole version fly. Um, I wanted to talk a minute about the cultural significance of that album. Like, it had been a while since a comedian came onto the scene with that big of a cultural impact. Like, I think the last ones before him were um, when Rodney was doing the, you know, those comedian specials in the early 80s that launched Roseanne and Dice and Louis Anderson and all that stuff. That was a significant event. And those comics became, you know, mega stars. But after that... You know, Seinfeld was starting to come around that point. Like, he wasn't, the show wasn't Seinfeld, Seinfeld yet. Um, The Dennis Leary thing exploding onto the scene was was just like unheard of for a comic, a comedian to blow up just from, I I guess by today's standards, would be, you know, something going viral. But he landed yeah. on MTV, which was, I guess, the viral channel at the time. Everybody watched MTV. So he was on MTV and instantly blew up. That album came out, was was huge. Um, I don't think anybody around our age or that time period doesn't know No Cure for Cancer, doesn't know uh, the Asshole song. Um, it, it, it's just, it, it really, it, there's not much that makes you feel old. But when I saw his birthday come around and I was just backtracking through some stuff and I went, oh, my God, I remember how well I think it was in junior high or first year of high school when all that came out. Um, Ninety three. I started high school that fall. So you're about, I think, a, a year older than me. So you're probably just in high school when that probably hit. Yeah. So. So I remember that being one of the first like comedy like this wasn't even a CD. Like this was like one of the cassettes that I got my hands on during camp. Um, yeah, I had the cassette school, like, too, and year. then until I got the DV, uh, the CD, I had the cassette first. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, it was one of those things where like a friend of ours had it, so like we would pass it around and like make copies of it, and we'd be listening to it in like class or something like you know the big old foam headsets. It's one of the first ones I ever really got into. I think the other other one I had was um, it was an old Gilda Radner cassette that she was like, like what? Yeah, well it was weird because like i growing up i you know we used to watch old uh, snl and things like that and she did a comedy album where she did a song called let's talk to the animals and then it was so funny because she's like you know she was talking about like animals and then she was like saying fuck you mr bunny eat shit mr bear and like as a you're kid, a lot like, older than you know, you're than you're saying because if you're talking about gilda radner <clears throat> It's like I, I had the Gilda Rat Gilda Radner album. I also had a bunch of Lily Tomlin albums. <laughs> no, nah, you're like sixty, aren't Tomlin, you? I I may be seventy five. Our pal Rob's um, in the chat. Ninety three. <laughs> Jordan graduated high school while I was learning who <laughs> Dennis Leary was, carrying a copy of his stuff on cassette. <laughs> Gilda Radner. Rob, is, you're not wrong. Look, I'm great a, act, you know, comedic actress and everything, but no one ever thinks of Gilda as a 
no. prominent stand-up comic. It's funny comic. because behind me, I actually have the record of the album I'm talking about. Of course like, you I do. actually have it right. Go get it. Um, Go get it. I want to see it. You have it right there in the room? See it? Yeah. I have it right here in the room. Give Go me get two it. seconds. You, got, you, you vamp. I will it. vamp. Uh, looking at the chat there, uh, AZ in the chat saying, is it true Louis C.K. claimed that Dennis Leary stole all his jokes? No, he didn't say he stole all his jokes. He said he stole some of the material that he used for... Uh, the asshole songs. There's like a couple lines that are very similar to what uh, Louis had come up with. Uh, if you do a simple search on YouTube, it was all explained on our old show uh, on uh, Opie and Anthony when Louis C.K. was in. Uh, there's a segment up there, somebody isolated, where he talks about that. And then there's another segment where I think we talked with Dennis somewhere down the line about the... Uh, Louis C.K. incident, and then of course everybody compares Dennis's early stuff to um, to Bill Hicks. That there's a lot of similarities that Bill may have, uh, that Dennis may have lifted it or not. Um, all that stuff's online. So yeah, Louis didn't say he stole everything; just a couple of concepts for the actual asshole song. But then also, Louis also said, and I think he was right that Dane Cook lifted some stuff off of him. There was a bit called "Itchy Asshole." Which uh, when Dane blew up, Dane was another weird out of the blue. Um, not that he wasn't working hard and everything, but uh, just just skyrocketed immediately in the early two thousands. Um, sort yeah. of Dennis well, Leary, Comedy Central, what like it, Comedy Central doing those like hour long little specials all the time? Well, they were doing like, like half hour right comedy right. hour and, and then right. whatever yeah. other slogan they used to repackage twenty minutes to half an hour for uh, for stand up comedy. But uh, Dane blew up because he was one of the first to figure out a lot of social media stuff. He was like on Friendster and then really blew up with MySpace and. Um, then he you know he had torgasm and and then everything just you know he he was really he was white hot for a certain amount of time and then cooled off significantly not that he's not still performing and he's not a good he's comedian this year but uh he had a couple movies that that nobody cared about and uh, he had the hbo tour with bob kelly and gary goldman and i forgot the other gentleman's name there was four of them and uh yeah and then dane kind of faded out from the lexicon of, of what is known as stand-up comedy uh, by today's standards. Dennis uh, par uh, parlayed from stand-up comedy into movies and to a lot of great movies, too. Like, you know, he, everybody has some clunkers when they're doing that stuff. But The Ref, if you've not seen oh, The Ref with the him ref. and Kevin Spacey, and I forget the, the, the woman, the other lead actress's name... Can you pull that up real quick? I'm pulling it up right uh, now. The Ref is a great Christmas movie. I think it came out in 94, 95, somewhere in, the, in that pocket. Um, fantastic. If you've never seen it, Dennis is great in there. Yeah, 94. 94. He's had, a, he had came, cameos in uh, Demolition Man, if you, if you remember that. He was one of the- Edgar uh, Friendly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think what uh, the actress is Judy Davis. You would know her if you saw her. I don't think yeah, she was like that's a household why I was spacing name, on her name. But you would notice her. Uh, what else? There was there was some other things Dennis was in. I mean, he was in all the Ice Age movies. Like, could you imagine telling your kids nowadays like that your favorite character on Ice Age used to sing a song about assholes, like being an asshole? Like it's yeah. one of those like Ice Cube doing, you know, all these family things. Like he was just in you know, like every one of these uh, Ice Age movies, he's doing a lot of, he did stuff on The Simpsons. He did an episode of The Simpsons. I mean, Rescue Me was, you know, almost 100 Rescue Me was huge. Like he had a show called The Job on ABC for a little bit, I think around 2000, 2001 in there. Uh, it only did like a season or two, and then it got canceled. But uh, Rescue Me was huge. Um, he used to have the little segments on, remember Dr. Katz? Um, yeah. What was it, Dr. Katz? professional therapist is that the slug line for it but yeah he was one of the uh, one of the patients on the couch there um, professional therapist i'm trying to think there was some other he was movies. in small soldiers like i mean he did a lot of list. like he was Hang in a on. bug's life yep he was in bug's life he was in a disney movie the ice you know, age movies like, like you said there's something else that i remembered him from suicide kings specific. is the other one i remember he was in the thomas like crown of late 90s yeah. Oh, I don't remember. I, maybe I didn't see that movie. I don't know. Wag the Dog. Oh, That's the movie you. I was thinking. Yeah, he was in Wag the Dog. And then there was a movie. Ooh, Judgment Night. 
there was a movie, I think it was called The Second Civil War, and it was about the country trying to split off again. He was in that as well. He was in a bunch of stuff. The TV stuff was good. Um, we did press with him a few years ago out at uh, San Diego Comic-Con because uh, he had Bob Kelly on a show. They did a show called Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll, which was on FXX yeah. for... I know at least one season. It might have done two, but I think it was just one. Only um, the 20 episodes, but I don't know how they rank episodes anymore. It could have been a two-seasoner. Could have been. Like 10 episodes each. Yeah. The show was good. I liked the concept of it, but uh, again, didn't last. Uh, but good with a lot of charity work for fire departments, not just in mm-hmm. uh, New York or in Boston, but all around uh the country for major cities he's raised money to get equipment and training and and even building structures for fire departments to have you know permanently so they could always train and figure out different scenarios i remember a handful of years after 9 11 in new york city he raised a lot of money and they built a pseudo skyscraper for the nyfd to train in for um terrorist threats uh building crash like stuff that they before 2001 you would, didn't think you needed to train for you know you had right. the towering inferno because of skyscrapers but now they're how to deal with uh you know uh, bomb explosions terrorist threats those kind of scenarios where the uh, the fire department would have to rush in and and uh be first on the line so he raised a bunch of money to build these pseudo skyscrapers so for them to train and i think he did in a few other cities too but these to this day he's still doing uh, the hockey tournaments for like the Cam Neely Foundation, Comics Come Home. The guy does a lot of shit. So whatever you want to say about him in the early days with the, him lifting his comedy and stuff, I think he, you know, there's clips out there where he's um, explained or defended himself on all of that stuff. That's not really uh, our business here to 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 worry and concern ourselves with. Um, but the guy, and also every time I've met him from coming up through O and A, or when we did the the press stuff with him for for Rescue Me and for Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll, always been very cool, always been very nice. And uh, yeah, that No Cure for Cancer album in 1993 was a big part of of my growing up, and that asshole song. So that's why we did it. That's why uh, we a big did part it. of my growing up, Eric, since I did find it, the Gilda Radner Live from New York album. Where she sings songs like "Let's Talk Dirty to the Animals," uh, "I Love to Be Unhappy," and a song about uh, Mick Jagger called "Gimme Mick." Yeah, see. Okay, so you are sixty. That's Rob is right. Here. So I am sixty. Rob is completely correct. Okay, you do lie oh, about your 60. age. I get it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> All right. Uh, moving on. Um, another date of note this past week. The uh, the death of Elvis Aaron Presley, our King of Kings. That's not his title, but I'm calling him that. Uh, the King <laughs> of Rock and Roll, Elvis Presley, died August 16th, 1977. <clears throat> that is how many years now? 26? No, 26. Uh, 26, 46. God damn, yeah. Wow, we're going to... This is what's going to be weird going forward doing the show. So where we are now in time for the next decade it's not even the next decade where it's ramping up the rest of this century is just going to be constant anniversary reminders centennial Mm -hmm. anniversary reminders of everything we know in the modern world everything that we know eric i still think the 90s was like a decade ago we all do we're, we all it's like oh that was only years, like 20 years, years ago the it's 90s. Like, oh my god we're 30 yeah we're getting to be 30 years past the 90s 30 years from the start of the 90s um but yeah everything's gonna have centennial anniversaries going forward i mean we already ha- started having the, f- the the first portions of them in uh, 1917 was uh world war one 1917 18 right in there so we already did the 100 years of that we just did the 100 years uh, roughly of the pandemic, the Spanish flu in the 20th century back in the, in the 1919? 1918. 18. 
Um, We've got World War II coming up soon. We've got the stock market crash of the 1920s coming up. Um, And then going forward, you're going to have the end. Like, we're going to be 60, 70 when it's like, you know, the 100th anniversary of television and the 100th anniversary of the Honeymooners. And I love Lucy and and all of that, uh, that stuff. So it's one thing celebrating their 100th year this year. Oh, that is true. That is also currently going on. So if you didn't feel old just from life passing you by or <laughs> just you know growing old as it is and now it's going to be constantly reminded it's like hey look this thing that you use every day in your life is a hundred years old today this year this decade whatever is going to happen You're, it's just going to be non-stop reminders that we're all going to die soon so look forward to that now were you a big elvis family like, did you listen to any of his music oh yeah all? I, I know Elvis. your dad was into like a lot of the older stuff yeah you know, i uh i dad, love so elvis I that's what you grew up i with. had I had um, back in the back in the nineties. They did an Elvis stamp. They put out a commemorative I Elvis stamp, right? And people were going crazy for the Elvis stamp. Now at the post office in my town, they had these government issued giant artwork pieces of the stamp, and or there was like two stamps. There was like the young Elvis and the older Elvis. Uh, the younger Elvis was there, and I remember towards the end of the campaign, I bugged the shit out of the ladies behind the desks there. To I'm like, look, if no one's claiming that, can I please get that? And she's like, well, I don't know. It has to go through, you know, how they all do. It's got to go through manage uh, the upper management and all this other. <laughs> right. I'm like, no, it doesn't. I'm like, if you just turn the other way, it, it'll be gone in two minutes. You know, I'll pull it off the wall. <laughs> just and this is before cameras, <laughs> by the way. I'm telling her that I'm openly going to try to steal this. As a kid, if a uh, You're teenager, in a government building threatening uh, government employees. Yeah, I, I, yeah I was. I didn't think about that until <laughs> you just put it that way. But yeah, I was telling a government employee I'm going to steal this thing if they don't just let the me felony, have it. The felony, sir. Uh, eventually, when the, the campaign was done, the, the ladies were nice enough. They they gave it to me so I could I took well, it home cool. and I had a frame. I had it forever. I don't know where it is. I looked through a lot that's of my weird. stuff. I, I have a bunch of stuff that's still un, uh, in storage that I haven't gone through. I don't think I have it. I think someone took it from me. Someone in my family took it. Because I know I had it when I was living down in Florida. And I can't remember. I'll have to ask Gittles if you remember seeing it. When I moved back to New York, because we we had an apartment at the time, uh, if he remembers seeing it up on the wall somewhere. Because I think somewhere between Florida and moving back up to New York City... It disappeared. So somebody walked off with it. And I, I, I wish I still had it to this day. It'd be up proudly displayed uh, in my home. Mm. But alas, I didn't yeah, have it. I was never it. into like music like just to listen to. Like, they, you know, you, everyone's heard a few songs. And I mean, I don't hate any of the music. I just was never into it. And I definitely never got into any of his movies. So, like, I was on the his outside movies were terrible. The fervor for Elvis. I, yeah, well, I know yeah. people who love Elvis and they're like, oh, they watch his movies and stuff. They're all, they're god awful. A lot of those movies from that time <laughs> are just poorly produced, poorly written, they're j- and they're long. They're over two hours for no reason, you know? Um, yeah, his movies were terrible. His music's good. I loved, do you remember the movie uh, Honeymoon in Vegas? Yes. With Nick Cage, uh, Sarah Jessica Parker? And I believe so, yeah. Who was the big name actor that was in there that played her dad? I want to say James Kahn. If only there was some sort of device that Jordan could be looking this I'm up looking, on right I'm now. I'm looking. All right. I'm on it. Okay, please 1992, do. American Comedy, James Kahn, Nicholas Cage, James Sarah Kahn. Jessica Parker. Nailed it. Movie is okay. Oh, Pat Morita. He was, I don't remember Pat Morita in it. All right. Little bonus there for you. The movie was okay. <laughs> the soundtrack was phenomenal. The soundtrack had a, a ton of big artists covering all Elvis songs. And uh, I remember. That's kind of cool. I remember. Remember. I remember um, Billy Joel was on there covering um, All Shook Up, I think. It was a really good version of that. A lot of the other stuff was, was country artists, which. I think was one of the first signs that country was blending into rock. I mean, now it's all pop, but in the nineties when country was you know, hitting its new golden era, uh, a lot of the country stuff was blending Damn. into becoming rock. And it roll. is a lot of country music. Yeah. But that soundtrack, so we got 
track soundtrack is phenomenal all shook up by billy joel billy joel also did heartbreak hotel okay you've got Bo- i remember Bono. all shook up burning love by travis tritt is fucking travis great tritt. is great uh vince neal's on i'm uh, not vince neal uh vince. dwight yoakam doing suspicious minds would be cool i actually like that song and i vince think Gil. he would do Why vince gill's on here neal. oh it's close enough gill neal vince gill uh, vince <laughs> they look Vince Gill was on there. Um, uh, Willie Nelson does Blue Hawaii. Right. Yeah, this, is, this is a good looking Jeff Beck's on there. I, I, I just pulled it. up now. Eh, Amy Grant. Bon, I don't remember. I must have skipped that her. track all the time because Bono singing Can't Help Falling in Love with You. No interest I'm in sure that. I'm sure that's a train wreck. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, if you're, lo- if you're a, an Elvis fan and you're if you don't know about this soundtrack, go and check it the fuck out on uh, all your streaming services. Or if you want to go out and buy the CD, I will not stop you. But yeah, that's pretty good. That was pretty good. One of the rare times where the soundtrack is better than the movie. Yeah, I'll put that on that list. So yeah, Elvis uh, died forty six years ago. Um, we got a bunch of other stuff to talk about here, stuff to play. Uh, do you have anything that you wanted to bring up before we go through the rest of the stuff? The the, the news nothing here? nothing too crazy. It's been a weird slow week. I've been sick, so like I just haven't really been doing anything. Just been kind of hanging out at home. So. You're sick in Not the really. summer? Yeah, it's weird, right? Well, I just went to the Offspring, so I'm sure it was a super spreader event, so I'm sure I got sick from that. You got the vid? And then I'm going to go uh, see the Chiefs play this weekend. So, I mean, I just can't ever get a, get ahead of myself here. Hold on. Tom from Alberta, our, our, our good pal and uh, trucking fanatic, going coast <laughs> to coast, up and down the dial. Uh, Elvis was offered decent roles, the Richard Dreyfus part in The Godfather, for instance. What, what Richard Dreyfus part is in The Godfather? I haven't seen The Godfather in years. Let me look. But Colonel Tom turned down the ones where Elvis wasn't the star. I, when was Richard Dreyfus in The Godfather? How am I not remembering <laughs> That's this? That's the bigger news right there. Let's look. Dreyfus, Dreyfus. Please let me know, because I do not remember that at all. I remember the Dreyfus being in Jaws, but I don't remember him being in The Godfather. I remember at one point in Jaws, he disappeared and didn't come back to the end of the movie. Yeah. Tom saying the accountant, he believes. That is so weird because I'm looking at IMDb and I am not seeing him at all. So he may have been uncredited for this. The Godfather has is one of those movies that has been overanalyzed to death. Like every detail that we know of World War II, probably the most scrutinized and most <laughs> explored war of uh, the modern era. The Godfather is that equivalent. Like, everybody has gone through that movie. Everybody knows every... Not everybody, but most people of a certain time know every piece of dialogue in there. They know every location. Everything was shot. Like, that movie has just been analyzed to death. I've never heard of <laughs> that Richard Dreyfus was in The Godfather. Maybe he got the Canadian edit because, yeah, I am not seeing this at all. The Canadian... All right. Who are the, who's playing Al Pacino <laughs> then? I don't know I don't enough know. Canadian actors to to, to recast The Godfather <laughs> right. at this moment. Otherwise, that would be the next 10 minutes of recasting The Godfather. Recasting The Godfather with Canadian, Canadian only actors people. and actresses. Yeah. We'll just throw the, the, the <laughs> cast of Degrassi, High, Junior High, and uh, Letterkenny all into there and just fill in the roles. So there you go. All done. Anywho. Um, so I'm sorry you were sick. That really sucks. Go get tested so that... Uh, you can I still have some of those home tests. I don't think they're, they don't, uh, they're oh, they okay. All right. They so expired. Tom cleared it up. Tom Tom messed with us. He got us. He was saying the Robert You Duvall confused thing. Richard Dreyfus with Robert Duvall? To be fair, oh, Tom. to Tom all To be fair. Look the same. To be fair. To be fair. Oh, Tom. Yeah, you really had me going for a moment. I'm like, how did I not know <laughs> Richard <laughs> Dreyfus was in The Godfather? Like, I'm on a movie podcast, and I'm sitting there going, have I not noticed Richard Dreyfus all these years in The Godfather? <sighs> all right. Well, I got, it's because he doesn't moment. exist. We got to reset. Tom got me all flustered. 
<laughs> I was like, sur- I was literally just searched Richard Dreyfus, the Godfather. All Nothing. Right. We, we, we got to take That's a moment to enjoy time. a beverage here. Hold on. What do you? That is you indeed a tasty uh, beverage. E? That is a tasty I'm, beverage. I'm pounding down these key lime pie bubblies, which are fantastic. Nice. Well done. Now this is uh, black tea with lemonade. Mixed that sounds good too. It. All right, uh, moving on. So we have a bunch of stuff here that we still need to talk about. We got some videos. Do you want to do some fun stuff? Do you want to do uh, some serious news? What are you looking at? I mean, I feel maybe we can get the series out of the way and just go right into the uh, the Bradley Cooper Jew hatred, apparently. <laughs> yeah, this is a, a very weird story. Did you put a video link to this? Uh, the trailer. Oh, okay. I don't think we need There's to. There's a trailer to the show. I, I We don't have to. Right. We can. I mean, I'll just get a still of... Okay, there we go. There's a still. So, Bradley Cooper got a lot of shit online this week because this trailer came out where he's portraying Leonard Bernstein. If you're not familiar with who Leonard Bernstein is, he is a guy that wrote um, a lot... Well, he was a... He was a composer. I was trying to think, is, was he a songwriter? Was he like an orchestra composer? Was he a little of both? Was he like an Andrew he was Lloyd a Webber composer, kind of thing? pianist, music educator. You know, he, he dabbled in a lot of different things, but he was mainly a conductor and a composer. Oh, okay. Um, you know what? Before we get to that, it looks like Giddles is here. So let's bring him in, and then we can get to the story. There he is. Hello, Giddles. How are you? Hey, hi, Giddles. Tired. Did Long you day. run home? Uh, I got as fast as I could. I'm like very sweaty right now. <laughs> yeah, he does look a bit hot. Well, you know what? Take uh, take your time, and uh, we're going to go into a story here. Feel free to enjoy a beverage and calm down as we are talking about the Bradley Cooper. I'm story down. Here. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to be so loud and rambunctious. Cool down. Sorry. Cool down. <laughs> cool down. Cool you grab down. yourself a tasty beverage. Don't don't make me get new edition on you. We're going to cool it down. <laughs> all right. Bradley Cooper, uh, the trailer came out for this movie where he's portraying Leonard Bernstein. Now, as we were saying, he's one of these guys that uh, a composer and orchestra stuff uh, wrote a lot of music for, I think, for some movies. But I think he was mostly known for Broadway. Right. Wasn't it a lot of Broadway composition that he was doing uh, a lot of musicals, musicals uh, on okay. the town. And then they filmed it. Wonderful town. Uh, All right. So West Side Story, things Broadway like that. Yeah, stuff Side that story, a little one no one's ever heard of. A little ditty. <laughs> About, no big deal. Yeah. Um, so a lot of Broadway stuff that translated into movies and, and what have right. you. So very, very famous, well-known uh, music Buried composer. In Brooklyn. Not far from my job. Oh, really? Yeah. Do they have a, a, like a monument or something? Club story. No, he's in Greenwood Cemetery. There's actually a lot of really famous people there. Like, uh, it's a really, really cool cemetery to go through. Like, yeah, Bernstein is there. Like. Morse, who did Morse code, is there. There's like these fucking sarcophaguses. It's a wild fucking Dang. cemetery. There's wild parrots that live there. It's a cool, it's a wow. cool cemetery. Didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. Popular yeah. tourist attraction in in the Greenpoint area <laughs> is to go visit the cemetery. <laughs> no, it's in Park Slope. That, no, it, it literally is. They give tar. Didn't they you just say he was buried they, in Greenpoint? No, I said uh, it's by, by my job, in I said. I swear you said Greenpoint Cemetery. Okay. All right. No. Maybe I missed Green, it. Greenwood Heights is the name of the cemetery. Cemetery is what I said. All right. There we go. Yeah, they do like haunted tours on Halloween. It's a really cool place. <laughs> so they have like fake letters. music playing. It's on strings and stuff. Ghost. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people there. That'd be Check great. The if they turn Morse. that cemetery into like Halloween horror nights, like they do in Universal, <laughs> they recreate right. everyone who's you know a resident of the place. Yeah, uh, every every section has a theme. You go through the Leonard Bernstein musical horror nights. <laughs> They got to pay. It's all the knockoff versions, like the Drew's famous CD version, because they can't get the rights to play the original music. Too expensive. They uh, so anyway. So this movie's coming out. It's called uh, Maestro, and Bradley Cooper is portraying Leonard Bernstein. And because of Leonard's features, they had to put a prosthetic nose on him. Leonard Bernstein, in case you aren't aware, Jewish man, or was a Jewish man, and. Bradley has the uh, prosthetics on him to uh, look like him, right? <laughs> now, this is getting some outrage online because people are saying that, um, you know, in, in, in the case of if they had a white person wearing dark makeup, they would say it's blackface. So the internet is upset calling this he's in Jew face. And where uh, I just closed the thing by accident. Here it is. So it's 
triggering a big debate online where they're saying this is anti-Semitic and this is inappropriate. For, I think people forgot that when you're acting, you're portraying a character in a lot of cases, fictitious. But if you're in a biopic or something, you're portraying the person who actually existed, right? It's one thing if it's like comically large or like overly done where it's just like Tom obvious. Cruise in Tropic Thunder, right? Obviously was a Martin shot at Roxanne. Harvey. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yes, good call. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. I was thinking Dirty Rotten Scoundrels was, was, and then I remembered was Roxanne was a movie. Yeah. <laughs> um, like Gittle said, yeah, if it's portrayed in, in a comedic fashion or something like that, it can be viewed as being inappropriate and and I guess legitimate outrage. He's wearing a prosthetic to look and resemble the character to its truest form, right? So they show. Um, let me see if I can yeah, pull I'm, up. I mean, I'm Jewish. Bernstein's got a big fucking nose. Look, yeah. I'm the, look. I'm Jewish. Look at my nose. It's not that big. No. It's the Norwegian side. No. There's there's a, a lot of Jews who have big noses. There's a lot of Italians who have big noses. There's a lot of Irish people who have big noses. People can have big noses. It happens. Yeah. So look at this here. So the prosthetic nose right there. They're saying that this enhancement on him uh, is inappropriate. It's anti-Semitic. I think people have forgotten that when you're portraying a real person for a documentary, if they change your hair, if they put prosthetics on, if you do other features or whatever to look like the person, they're doing their job. It's not inappropriate and it's it's honoring the person that they're portraying in these right. pieces. Not everything that's like, well, you need to have a Jewish actor portraying Leonard Bernstein. Okay, maybe they just they tried um, they did rehearsals with people and screening stuff and they didn't like anybody. Maybe they liked the job Bradley Cooper was doing. I don't I know. Well, Bradley Cooper, I think, like, is directing it. So I think Bradley Cooper picked Bradley Cooper. Oh, I didn't know he was directing it. All right, that. Well, like I yeah. saw Oppenheimer. I don't see people complaining that Einstein was this bumbling idiot in the fucking woods. Like that's all he was doing—just walk around the woods. Oh, where's my hat? Like that was the whole. He was eating movie. an ice cream cone, tripped in the lake. Nobody was like, "Hey, this looks like very." He was by a lake. Still, yeah. I mean, he was right next to the lake. Um, but I mean, like everyone in that movie was cast and had makeup on to look exactly like the people they were mm -hmm. looking like, and a lot of the people that they were portrayed in that movie was jewish and i didn't no one said anyone was anti-semitic there so i don't know yeah I, I don't get it i'm trying to see if i can bring the photo up here of of what he looks like we saw the trailer there but we're they did a side-by-side -side comparison uh, if i can get this to get any bigger but you can see right there so there's bradley cooper aged up prosthetic features all of that stuff to look kind of like, looks like steve martin a little bit. <laughs> nah a little bit. Looks like someone's accountant. Yeah. Oh, another Jewish stereotype. I see how it's going, Jordan. <laughs> you can't fucking stop with this. Well, you know. I don't know. Not that far off. So I, I don't think it's anywhere in the realm of being offensive or inappropriate. But of course, you know, people online have to have problems with everything. So Bradley Cooper is being dragged over his portrayal of Leonard Bernstein. Um... And uh, one of the criticisms is at least worth talking about, while the other is completely ridiculous. Uh, for the movie Maestro, chronicling the life of the New York Philharmonic conductor who, who happens to be Jewish, one of the criticisms is that Cooper wore a prosthetic nose for the role, which some people online are screaming is Jew face stereotype. Point of fact, Bernstein did have a big nose, so we're supposed, uh, so we suppose this is a fair debate to is uh, issue to debate. I don't think that I don't really think so, but people are going to yell and scream, whatever the ridiculous criticism. Some folks are, are slamming Cooper, who is not Jewish and producers for casting him in the role that could have gone to a Jewish actor, which is what I said probably was going to be uh, a problem here. So now in the profession of pretending to be something else, be someone else. You're not allowed to pretend to be someone else unless it's somebody that's exactly like you. At least yep. according to the internet. You that's how it, it works. Yeah, you can't portray but it doesn't because it's like, okay, well, what about the times when they recast a character that was initially Who's known Hey, Eric Hollywood. You know. Oh, and Rob, are you sure? Carl Rob. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, Rob. So, where they recast somebody that was initially somebody uh, or something else 
previously in the property. We'll go back to um, middle 2000s when they brought Battlestar Galactica back. There was some uproar with the Don't characters. The, the character, yes, they recast the robots with the wrong gendered robots. The uh, <laughs> the character Starbucks in the television series back, what was that, the 70s that show was out? Um, uh, early 80s. Starbuck was a, was a guy, an old crusty guy. Kind of that the coffee shop is named after a character on Battlestar Galactica. It possibly could no. be. We don't know. No. Uh, there's only some way to look that up. The uh, the character who's a crusty guy. He, after the character, he kind of looked nope. like Hannibal. It's named from the character Moby Dick. He he looked like uh, he looked like Hannibal from the A Team. Starbuck yeah. on the TV show. They recast when they brought the show back and redid it. They recast Starbuck as a female. They brought in Katie Sackhoff. Old fans were pissed, but she did a fine job and it didn't really matter. You know, that that she was I liked portraying. Her portrayal. Yes, it was fine. It was fine. Uh, they get upset when they recast people. It's like, well, that character was, was white. Now it's a black person in there. Or oh, that person was uh, black, but now it's a Latino person. Like, there's always something that everyone's got to be upset over rather than let's see what it com- when it comes out. Let's see how it's portrayed. Let's see the work. It could be very moving. It could be well written. It could be a piece of shit. Like, wow, this script is terrible or her acting was perf- was terrible. It could. You, you don't know. They just all these things that keep getting leaked out as things are being made, and everyone's just like, "Well, now we got to ruin this, or now there's going to be a big problem because I don't like the direction that this thing that I have nothing to do with is going in." So I got to go online and start screaming and yelling and and, and causing <coughs> nonsense like this. Um. So anyway, yeah. So there's a lot. This will die down in no time, but the fact it's like, well, he's not a Jewish actor, so why is he portraying that? I don't know. Maybe you could have got a Jewish actor. But now we found out that Jordan said that he's directing the thing. So he cast himself in the lead role. Studio gave the okay on it. This is something they probably owed him or it was an agreement that he had somewhere down the line. Hey, I'll do this picture or I'll, I'll produce this other thing. If you let me do a passion project or let me do something that I can direct where um, I can be hands on in control of the story or what I'm doing here. Who knows? But it's it's made. It's coming out. From what I saw in the trailer here just now, looks fine. I don't see any problem with it. But people, uh, everyone's got to complain. Everyone's got to yell. What if they're trying to make the controversy so that people will want to see it? Because I never heard of this project until 10 minutes ago. Yeah, it's literally that we dropped the trailer <laughs> like two or three like days maybe ago. Maybe they're trying for controversy now. Controversy is like kind of helps. Well, and here's here's the thing. It would be one thing if, like, it was just one of those, they made it, they didn't consult with anybody. Right here, it's saying that Leonard Bernstein's children defended the pl- the prosthetic nose and said yeah. dad would have been fine with it. Yeah. Um, they went on his Twitter and said Bradley Cooper included the three of us along with every step of this amazing journey as he made our his film about our father. Um, said uh, his daughter, Jamie Alexander, uh, his son Alexander and Nina Bernstein. We were touched to the core to witness the depth of his commitment, his loving embrace of our father's music and the sheer open hearted joy brought to his exploration. So his family says it's OK. Then why the hell are you all pissed off? Let it go. Yeah. If it was it like could, it could be defending the family. What, what else you got? It could be like it'll said maybe that, you know, they had plants online to generate the uh, the uh, the upheaval, if you will, to cause the outrage. Maybe it's a it's you know what a, would be anti-Semitic thing? to me as a Jew, giving him a different nose and taking him, making him less Jewish than he was. That would be like shrinking it down. Yeah, yeah, like totally. Like that would actually be more anti-Semitic than keeping him as he's supposed. Or what to if be. they made him Malaysian? You know, or Pakistani or something yeah, like that. It's like, wait a minute. But, but, this but really, you're not even close here. Eddie Murphy like, is Leonard Bernstein. It just like, seems no. like that would be, that's worse, is making his nose look less. So, so they're trying to turn tone down the Jewishness so that maybe yeah. people would watch it. Like, that would be way worse than just keeping him as he is. So I don't fucking know, man. People will complain about anything. So I don't my, really my, my care. Gr- my gripe is when you complain so much and then the family defends it, you have nothing to complain about anymore. Yeah. Like, let it go. Yeah, Find they have to sign to off the about. rights to his story being told. If they're fine, mm-hmm. the studio's fine, everybody else is fine with it. Well, the internet's going to. Well, the internet will also complain about, hey, uh, they're going to. They just greenlit a new Star Wars property and now there's a huge outrage. I'm not saying they, they did, but 
when they do Wait, where can i sign up for the outrage yeah see exactly what i'm talking about hey <laughs> star wars is going to put out this new property or whatever well here's everything that's wrong with it it's like they just announced that they haven't cast anybody it hasn't been written they just said hey we're going to explore this story and now everyone online has a fucking problem with it it could be as simple as that too i do not know but um, Giddles has a picket sign that's just a whiteboard he just fills in whatever he's mad about Right, Star Wars. Um, we have a super chat that popped in there that I, I apologize I, I did not see come in, and I'm got to bring it up there. It's our old pal Cardiff Electric. You each owe me fourteen ninety nine plus the cost of this su- super chat here. Um, Cardiff, that our pal from Minnesota. Yeah, our pal from Minnesota, who for some reason loves to convert his money into Canadian <laughs> loonies uh, to pay for everything. I don't know. Which, by the way, Cardiff uh, making a feature one here on the studio. You can see he's now a permanent part of the studio. Love it. And uh, also sent me this, my own autographed picture of Cardiff. And he Very sent some nice. snacks for the consumer, which we'll do in just a little bit. Thank you, Cardiff. We appreciate that. No, stop doing that. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. There we go. All done. <laughs> All done. Uh, the Gurks in the chat. I'm German. Am I allowed to say Jew face? No, you are definitely not. That is very much frowned upon. I Wait, use it in a sentence. Way, Let me see how you're saying it. You would say it. Yeah, if you're like, where are you <laughs> going, say. Jew face? Like, if you said it like that, like, it's not okay. <laughs> I like this new concept now. This is it's like can I say that? Yes, use it in a sentence. Let's see if it's right. appropriate. Let's see how you're using it before we judge what. He's very confused. All right. Yeah, we're all allowed to do this because I'm Jewish. I give a pass. Cardiff <laughs> uses a VPN to save money. That makes a lot of sense. A VPN. Very yep. personal network. You don't have a VPN? You don't use a VPN? No, oh, I don't. You've never is, there, been. is there any companies that advertise for them that uh, we can get like some free VPNs? <laughs> there might be actually, because the one that uh, contacted me that we use. What we? Well, for the show here that I'm that oh, I'm using. Royal we. Uh, you know what? All right, I'll reach out. To, I who? What's the company name? NordVPN. They're the one that oh, reached yeah, out. Oh yeah, I've heard about them. Yeah, so that's the one we've been using for a while. I'll I'll, I'll reach out to them see if we can get you something. That'd be kind yeah, of Kittles, you're part Nord. Yeah, you're, you're a part Nord. It's a discount. <laughs> yeah, I'm like half there. It's like half the letters. Yes, if you give him free uh, VPN access, he'll dress like a Viking for the rest of the for the rest of the year on the show. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> yeah, try it. Let's see what happens. We'll get you a nice yeah, furry well, vest, uh, the horn helmet, and uh, <laughs> some kind of weird World Stein of Warcraft you weapon. You drink out of. Yeah. I do have a wine bottle that's built into an antler in my closet. So yes. Right. Or no, it's a, it's actually a hoof. Sorry, it's a giant. It's a, hey, a deer leg. It counts. It's just it's it's a start. It's a beginning. All right, moving on. So I found some things online I want to show you because they're completely ridiculous. Um, I tend to when I work very late into the night, and I tend to find some things that are just ridiculous and sometimes you i send throw, them to me i do i send them to jordan or i send them to you know our discussion group or various other people i'm like hey i saw this stupid thing at four in the morning i needed to send it to you now not because i feel like i'm inconveniencing you otherwise i will forget to send you this stuff so um i i, yeah, I usually wake up with shit from like four in the morning from eric <laughs> and i'm like how late was he up tonight and if I don't see a response from Jordan, then I'm like, okay, this was Eric alone sending this. Because 4 o'clock <laughs> is also like, well, yeah, because that means Jordan's asleep, which means it's really fucking late, you know? <laughs> All right. So I found uh, I found this clip. I was going through, you know how we do this week in disasters, right? Yeah. And I always go through old newsreels. And, and uh, last week, Jordan and I had a discussion about industrial films educational style films or they were presented in an educational way to so that the general public can find out how a car is made back in 1954 you know that those kind of things which led us to jimmy it led us (laughs) zinc come back (laughs) zinc um it led us to that trigger without zinc (laughs) that that episode is banned in a lot of countries because of that scene because of the little info, uh, the little industrial. When he film? goes to kill himself, he's gonna try the, to kill himself. Sorry, Jimmy. It's like, it's, uh, that that the pin and the of hammer the there States, are made out of zinc. Funniest joke. It is. <laughs> and then when, he, when he's reca- Jimmy's recapping, and you just see the gun in the corner, and it just won't stop shooting. Yeah. Won't stop <laughs> yeah. shooting. <laughs> Anywho, um, so it led to another discussion of the in, 
the industrial films being parodied <laughs> on Tom and Jerry, the old cartoon series, where some or Looney Tunes, like you would like have uh, not so much Looney Tunes. They were more the the Tom and Jerry um, people, I think. Who makes Tom and Jerry? Hanna Barbera. Hanna Barbera. I, I forget who who makes. I them. don't remember who Tom and Jerry is at all. Cat and Mouse. It's Worker like and the, Parasite. W B. Worker yeah. and Parasite. Warner Brothers uh, owns Tom Hanna and Jerry. Bar- Hanna Barbera. Hanna Barbera. Okay, so that's Brothers, Turner yeah. stuff. Metro Golden Metro Golden Mayor till eighty six, and then Turner from eighty six to present. Yeah, so Turner owns okay. that. All right, so Tom and Jerry, Cat and Mouse, very old. I mean, it's been around since the sixties, I think. But they would have the Tom and Jerry cartoons and then they would have specialty episodes where they would do like House of the Future or Modern Conveniences and things like that. And Bugs they were Bunny nips the nips. Sure. Different company, different <laughs> subject. But that was a real one. I know it was, but See, didn't really... that's one of those situations where you said it, you used it in a sentence and we know you're not allowed to say that. Right. <laughs> that has been what? banned for you. What? I can't say that one. You ever you've never seen that episode? Uh, no, we have. We have. <laughs> The industrial cartoons where they would show you about modern conveniences in the kitchen, like you press this and the toaster would would do the dishes, and it was just all absurd, but it was fun and interesting to watch. And Jordan and I were talking about, like, yeah, I used to like those versions of the cartoon better than I think the Tom and Jerry stuff, because a lot of the Tom and Jerry stuff also got banned, because they had a um, housekeeper slash nanny that you never saw the face, but she was always fucking the husband. Big fat. No, I don't know what that don't know what you are watching. Please send me those links. But the, it was always a fat lady, but a very stereotypical black mammy Man style type, voice, yeah. uh, which was, I guess, appropriate for the time, but they, not anymore. But you would always hear her yelling at Tom to get out of the house or you know something broke in the house. And it was all very stereotypical stuff. Uh, so a lot of those episodes got banned. But. The industrial and those um, educational style film episodes were always the most fun. They were the most interesting. And then seeing the real ones that were made where there's ones going back where it's teaching women how to make a sandwich to keep your guy happy. Like, I'm not even joking that it sounds like a ridiculous premise, but it exists. There's other things where there was the car of the future and the guy was like trying to get like cozy to his date so he pushes the button and the car shrinks to put the chick in his arm because he's going to get some yeah so, yeah or he's like going to take order. some in that kit ki- ki- exactly. uh not uncle phil in the chat <laughs> saying it was the style at the time that is correct it was the style <laughs> so i go looking through these things time to time and because it's in your algorithm sometimes things get suggested on the side of youtube this video came up uh when i was looking at newsreel stuff a while ago and i see this and i go this can't be real. This has to be a fake thumbnail. And I go and click it and it turns out it is real. So this video is called Stunt Girl Thrives on Dynamite Diet. <laughs> this girl is a stunt woman at the time. She shit, ex- explosive shits? What's up with this dynamite diet? She does stunts with dynamite around her. Whoa. She's really blowing up. Yeah, so l- let's take a look at this here. Meet Miss Helen Howe of Indian descent, known as the Princess of Dynamite. She's prepared- All right, before we even get into that, of look Indian at this. descent. Right there. Right there. The, in this, this fucking garb that's not even Did like... Did I mention I'm going to go see the Chiefs play on Saturday? Yeah, it's not even like, you know, authentic. It's just weird to be wearing a tie with that headdress. Right. That's business in the Now of Indian descent, known as the Princess of Dynamite. She's preparing to show you in Birmingham, Alabama, how she can be blown out of a cardboard casket by five sticks of dynamite and live. All the that process that that, they put, that they concept- put like a hood on her so that every single time it's a different one. It's just it's like uh, what was that um, oh that movie, The Prestige. It's like then she just keeps dying every time. Oh like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just waiting for the announcer to be like, "This powder keg Pocahontas is really gonna blow your top." The fact, come on! But the, she's going to be blown out of a casket with five <laughs> sticks of dynamite. Might as well shoot her out That's of how I want to go. <laughs> All the might <laughs> of wake. dynamite might be a might too mighty, and it might not. No earplugs. <laughs> right. Bye now. So see ya. What other safety precautions should yeah, we bye do? Now. Well, just see put ya. her in a helmet. A winter coat. Yeah, put her a in a helmet. And, yeah, right. In a winter coat. <laughs> that'll uh, that'll pad the explosion. This North Face jacket will really save her. 
By now, say, I wonder if there's a chance that this stunt may be blown up all out of proportion. But she keeps her power. Oh, dry, they did it. Means, ah, there's good views tonight. A tisket, a tasket, that's all for the casket. But how now about Miss Howe? Let's have no discussion. A tisket, a tasket, wow, there goes the about. casket. And then he kept rhyming, and he's like, "How now, brown cow?" Or no, something how now, Miss How? Because that's her name. Oh, and by the way, her name he is Miss How, like in How. Like yeah, this yeah. whole yeah. thing is so—it's hilarious it's and completely wrong by today's standards. <laughs> oh, the fifties! But here comes the doctor. You can tell by his Jew face. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that nose. Uh, <laughs> his nose came in before he did. Look at this side right here. Watch her just stumble out. This looks like a Super Dave Osborne bit. Right. Yeah. Use tonight. A tisket, a tasket, that's all for the casket. But how now? Just comes rolling out. out. No of discussion. It was when, a when Homer concussion. is crusty and he's dressed up as the clown and he crashes into the house and it takes like four seconds before he flies through the windshield. Right. Like into the party. Like that's what this reminds me of. They don't even run <laughs> over so with great. a blank, like one of those heavy blankets or a fire extinguisher or anything like that. The guy just kind of walks over. Tips her with his foot and like, you alive? What's going on here? <laughs> He's going to get a jacket. A tasket, a tasket, that's all for the casket. But how now about Miss Howe? Let's have no discussion. It was a terrific concussion. At ease, little guy. She'll be okay by and by. Though from this, I can't see how. Oops. Here's how Helen Howe, star of our cast, who thrilled oh us all God. as she survives the blast. What? That was the same shot from earlier. Yeah, they that is like, some the like horse, they cut it together so it looked like she survived. Th- she probably had like <laughs> right. She, they just played the footage in reverse. That's what I'm saying. They just played it in reverse. Look at her go right <laughs> she back died in. Died that day. <laughs> they didn't want to t- lose the footage. Wait, why is that crash test dummy movie? This exhibit is over. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Right, I watched this That's thing twice last <laughs> night, and I go. I can't believe, and the fact that they even got an, like, look, if you did that today, I yeah, people would pay to come and sit, it looked like at a high school track or something. Yeah, I'd Obviously. go, I'd pay a ticket fee to go watch somebody <laughs> hidden, put in a casket and blown every up. every fucking day, Eric, until this person exploded for real. You know what? They could add this as a feature to that uh, celebrity graveyard right in your neighborhood there. <laughs> Who's next? Yeah. They just have like three different celebrities. Yeah, there's yeah. three shows on Exploding Friday, caskets. Saturday, and Sunday. Oh, man, we missed the 12 o'clock show. Well, but we're just in time for the 2 o'clock show. We'll be, this will be, uh, this will be a great feature for, for that, um, for that, uh, graveyard there. Uh, so there is that. And now I want to show you this other thing here. You know how it, it's forgotten by today. But remember in the 80s, I think maybe part of the 70s too, but it was a big thing in the 80s where they were selling music as TV infomercials, where they would have mm-hmm. collections now, this of... this is what I call blah, blah, blah. No, no, yeah, that's, la- like... that's the 90s. I'm talking about the 80s where they had like Freedom Rock, man, where they would be playing oh, yeah. those kind of things, where they're they selling song, albums. Get it on four albums or three cassettes. The yeah. Watching the clouds go away. Always got to work a With such that hits as, and then it would scroll up all the songs, and like the one song would be like highlighted, so you know that's the song playing. And yeah, it was like I love same with those. like Time Life books or like Columbia House Records. That's exactly what it is, because you had KTEL Records too, which was uh, mm. like in the '90s. It was I think it became Rhino Records, but uh, you had the KTEL Records that were putting like the best of uh, the disco era, and it would be four vinyl, three cassette, or. You know, uh, no, it would you would have that screen which was just like a blue screen with white font and yellow font, and you'd hear the buzz from the from the graphics on the TV because oh, yeah, they yeah. didn't know how to right. to manage that. They'd be like stuttering a little in the corner, You're right? And they would sit there and go, "No, send a check or money order to PO Box, blah 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 blah, Philadelphia, you know, Pennsylvania." Go, and then or it said, "Sorry, no order. CODs." Like, cause if you don't know what COD was, it used to be like cash on delivery. It's essentially like you're ordering your food. You pay for your food when it was delivered to the house. They used to mm. allow you to shop for things and have it delivered to the house. Then you would pay. And then they realized people were not going to pay and say, I didn't order this. And it fucked a lot of business models up. They're like, no, right. we're not doing like this. such a trip to go to someone's house and be like, here's your 12 CDs from Empire or from a, a record a clearing house or whatever. You're like, I didn't. Columbia I didn't House. It was oh, yeah, Columbia House Columbia Records. House. Right. It's like you can get like nine CDs for a penny. And you only paid $20 more for that last one. Well, I'm paying that penny on COD. Yeah, uh, Gherk in the chat there. K-Soul Classic. Know my brother. You got to buy your own. Yeah. I think it was you got to get your own. 
but well they would always dress up in like this style of whatever music yeah and then they they they, they just it was a big time for these compilations of of music um sets where some would be like uh romantic music where a couple is sitting by a fireplace on a bearskin rug with big glasses of champagne or they're they, in a champagne cup in a hotel like. no that's the monterey lodge, oh, uh, lounge. lodge. that's something different wanted- I thought the Mount Airy Lodge was like making it as an adult. Like I thought that was it. And then I grew up and I saw the commercials and I was like, no, that's just where you go for an affair. Like that's all that right. place is. Like, that was where they were trying to turn the shitty Poconos into like, a, this is the resort you got to come to for a weekend. Get away. the Hoconos because it was like, you just go there and just like have a fucking affair. The commercial is ridiculous. All right. I got to pull that it's up like now. People eating breakfast without clothes on. It's like, what is this place? All right. We're... I remember the jingle too. It was like the beautiful Mount Airy, Mount Airy Lodge. Lodge. All you have to bring is your, is love, your love for everything. everything. Yeah, the commercial was on every fucking day after school. Yeah, let me see if I can find it. Here. Got the people playing <laughs> tennis. And you could like yeah, and the, and there was like world class dining and shows, and then they'd be disco dancing. You know, oh, it, yeah. Uh, I think I found. Yeah, I thought that was making it. When I was a kid, I was like, man, one day I'm going to go to that Mount Airy Lodge and it's going to be great. We all did. We <laughs> yeah. all did because it was shown on all the local channels all the time. Channel 5, yeah. Channel 11. All the time. During the reruns. They, they would air during kids' cartoons in the afternoon. Yeah. For that. No sense. Or where they would do the, the Milford Plaza for oh Broadway. God, Oh, the lullaby the of theater, Broadway. At the Winter Green Theater. Yeah. The Winter Mint Theater. And in the center it of it all is the Milford Plaza. And then they go over the rates about staying oh. in on the worst hotel on 8th Avenue in a really oh. sketchy area. It's like, come on down to Broadway. We can't promise you your safety, but it's $40 a night for the room. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Monterey Lodge. And then we'll get back to what I was going to talk about. Mount Airy Lodge is uh, was a I don't even know if it's still around anymore, but it was a really shitty. Oh, I want to go fake glamorous lo- uh, lodge in the Poconos. It's essentially like if every city or area has that one. Oh, mo- it's still alive and it's a casino now. Okay, so it, but it's not the same f- feeling or the same vibe that it had back in the seventies and eighties. It was essentially what Gittle said. It was for cheating or for swingers, you know. And it was like I don't know. Like the website looks like it's still the same thing. Okay, maybe <laughs> it still is. So you had this area. Everybody has a, a motel in some area near you. Be it, uh, if you're in the suburbs or in the city, you know a motel that that's the motel people go to to fuck. You know, like on Long Island, it was the Comac Motor Inn. Everybody knew that because they had oh. themed rooms, you know, and mm-hmm. one of the rooms had the champagne glass hot tub thing where you, had, you go up a little circular staircase and you're just naked in a champagne glass. <laughs> that's a bubble bath hot tub thing, because apparently that equaled sexy at the time. That equaled making it as an adult, Eric. As Gittles put it, yes, making it as an adult. Uh, so anyway, the Milford Plaza, uh, not Milford Plaza, the Mount Airy Lodge, I'm, I'm all over the place, was, it's all the same. it had a very catchy jingle, <laughs> but it was exactly what Gittles was saying. It was for uh, fornication now and adultery. Now big time, and the season is just right. You can play all day and dance into the night. I'm not going to lie, this started off, you could have told me this was a big red chewing gum commercial. And I it's the lie. same thing. Please put on some clothes, dude. For reservations, breakfast. Oh, he needs his mimosa with his mitza. Wait, who's doing those spins on vacation? No one. <laughs> right. He's just like, I'm going to fuck your nose right now, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> well, that scene, that scene there where uh, <coughs> the couple's in front of a fireplace wearing terrible sweaters on a bearskin rug, drinking bad champagne. That's from the albums. Right. They would have a collection of albums that would be all love and soul songs. It was pretty pretty much fuck music. It's like play right. all these songs if you want to, you know, if you're going to get down, Barry put White. this on your record player. Earth, Wind and Fire, Marvin Gaye, a lot of uh, you know, uh, R&B and soul stuff in there. What I'm leading to is I found something that I had no idea existed and that I may forget some things, but as soon as somebody talks about it or I see the visual, I go, yes, I remember. And then I remember everything about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I knew a lot of those compilation commercials. I found one for punk music. That's Mm -hmm. legitimate. It's not a parody. It was a legitimate compilation thing. You paid for this? You don't steal this album? (laughs) Correct. Um, This was for punk music. 
and I go, I don't remember this at all because it's so terrible and so memorable after watching it. That I was like, there's no way I, I, w- I would have forgotten about this. But this was a thing. And there's a couple things I want to point out as we watch this here. Um, I brought up the Now, is this like 80s punk when this came out or was this like the 90s, <laughs> early 2000s? I want to say I... I'm gonna say this is a, this is a '90s commercial, apparently, from the okay. way that it's labeled. So it's a '90s commercial, but they're talking about I. The way they're explaining it is like you know '70s and '80s punk, and then gotcha. what is actually revealed on the compilation will blow your mind. So oh no! First of all, let's look at this as the guy looks like unfrozen caveman lawyer here. Oh right? God, that's right. I think you sent oh, this to geez. me. The fake hair. This looks like a Saturday Night Live bit already. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not. But Your son scares me. Let's watch The worst this. part is I know people who look like this now. Yeah. The Remember there was a... Um, oh, before we even get to that. Remember there was a, a... When Dazed and Confused came out, there was a knockoff mo- version of that movie called The Stoned Age. Oh, yeah. Yes. Do you remember that? It used to it run terrible, on... US, yeah. I think it ran on USA or movie channel hbo one of those things a lot because they couldn't get the rights to the to days so that confuse because it was a big motion picture right. uh, yeah. uh blockbuster movie at the time so they got the stoned age one of the guys wears a black leather jacket and has a weird crumpled up face looks exactly like this guy he looks so confused it looks like he <laughs> looks like he turned into a vampire on buffy <laughs> when they would get the wrinkled like, hair, seventies, and he's somehow holding a compact disc. I'm very confused. This there. is this is early nineties. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, so let's oh, let's, my God. let's uh let's go down this journey. Get the Buffy here. reference out of my head now. Here we go. Makes us mad is wasting money on CDs with only one or two good songs. Yeah, talk about punk. Yeah, we got the CD called Punk. It's loaded with our favorite tunes. I man. don't know why Hulk Hogan's what on do you here. Think the weight of that wig is. <laughs> I don't. Jesus. It, it, you know those Making lights. Smile weird. This is before LEDs, so you know the lights are just melting. Whatever glue is sitting like on his, his head there. Like his freeze frame right here looks like when you make an AI video and they try to make people, but they don't really look like people. If you look close enough, it's like that's not a real person. Like, it's just wait, like a, a real person doesn't have that many teeth, yeah. or like why is there an extra <laughs> finger on that hand? Why is the cheek through the mouth? Like yeah, it's just, there's weird shit going on here. Why is there a bee in his hair? And she looks like, like she's had bee? some sort of cheek <laughs> implants because look how high her cheeks are compared well, have to you heard of punk yeah. eric i i guess i haven't uh i was trying to say i don't know why hulk hogan's in here but i it's guess <laughs> whoever I'll, uploaded I'll, this I'll, video I'll, felt the need to put this hulk hogan he sticker wore, he on wore a do rag to court he's punk rock dude. okay here i'm we go. okay yeah we got the cd called punk it's loaded with our favorite tunes man yeah just listen all right hold on loaded with our and favorite tunes man that is not how anybody in perfect. the punk culture would talk at all yeah, that was like very surfer. No one, that would, surfer no one in the stoner community stuff. would do this interview for one. Right. They'd be like, go fuck yourself. And then... <laughs> right. It's like, go there. Go so fuck you yourself. So I can leave. <laughs> yeah. Go fuck yourself. And then order now. That's it. It was a five second commercial. <laughs> yep. I'd right. buy that album. I'd buy that album. This isn't punk music. Oh my That's God. not what punk music. House? None of this is punk music. This punk CD has 36 tunes, man, and I'm telling you, they're all great. Yeah. They're definitely not punk. Erasure is is fucking best of like EDM pussy shit. This is just like when we put on the 80s pop songs, 80s new wave. That's is what this comes up. Yeah, 80s new wave and 80s pop. This is what comes up. (sighs) Is the the cure on here too, Eric? So the knack is the close to it. I would say the knack is close. Yeah. Huey Lewis, definitely not. I want a new drug by Huey Lewis. Nope. 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 Not punk. No. Not punk at all. Not even remotely close to punk. You can only get this CD by calling this 800 number, man. Yeah. So call man. Now. Look at the graphics. Graphics are very <laughs> cyberpunk uh, uh, of the 80s. But like, why Elvis and Einstein? I don't know. <laughs> Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan, Elvis, Einstein. This thing's got it all. Yeah, I'll take it. I'd want. I'd listen to their their songs. If if it was Elvis, Einstein, and Hulk Hogan doing punk covers, I would. Oh God, I would I'd buy 100%. that. 
But who's listening to Rock, Here Rock, Comes Rock, the Rain Rock, Again by the Eurythmics? Square, brother. Yeah. <laughs> Madness, Human League, The Tubes. This is all new wave shit. This is not punk. 8675309. That's not a punk song. Flock of Seagulls. You can't get more punk than that. They had the hair. That was it. <laughs> all right. Straight, cra- Straight Cat is not. E- it gets put into a lot of punk and swing and ska compilations, but they are like a rockabilly band. Right. Stray Cats, because it was it became Brian Setzer. He was like the head of of all of this stuff, and and went solo, kind of on the the outskirts of of being near the punk genre, but no, still none of this punk. Devo, that's performance art. That's avant garde shit. Nick Lowe, Quarter Flash, I haven't even heard of. You can get all 36 of these great songs hey, well, on two wait. CDs for only twenty six ninety five, Or two cassette tapes for just twenty one ninety five. Oh, well, now Michael Jackson's order. punk? To order. Yeah. And then, see, the blue that screen. Is... Where, oh, the blue screen, yeah. Where you did the... As the graphics, because they couldn't handle order it on now. television. Yeah, call this phone number on that. Or send it, yeah, send a check to somebody's P.O. box. Guaranteed, you're going, you'll be able to trace that and get your order, hopefully. <laughs> right. Well, I sent the check. Eventually, I'll get my punk CDs. Twenty six ninety nine, uh, twenty six ninety five for CDs plus four ninety five shipping and handling. Send it to this PO box out in the middle of Colorado that you can't possibly trace, and hopefully, you'll get your punk c- compilation um, within allow three to four weeks for delivery. Mm hmm. But see, there's also two-day express delivery available. Right. See, Elvis said this is bullshit, and even Elvis left. He's like, I was on board for a little bit, but yeah, this is bullshit, and he left. Now Michael Jackson just left. All right. I'm actually like trying to find this CD somewhere online, but yeah, I'm not finding it. That is... Uh, Uncle Phil, yeah, this is before Now That's What I Call Music. Yeah, this was at least a decade before all that stuff came out. <laughs> so this was like now that's what I call music of the wrong genre. Like they didn't even like com- like try to put at least one punk song on there to give it any credibility. Like everything was like new wave pop from the eighties. Well, they tried to find some like punk rock song, but they couldn't find a record label. It was just like some dirty kid handing out CDs. <laughs> right. Yeah, that is. It's wild. I haven't been this upset wild. since. Wait, who was it that won the uh, the heavy metal award that one year at the MTV Music with Jethro Tull? Beat oh, Metallica yeah, for, like, heavy Metallica metal was award like or something like that. That's like what me? this is. <laughs> it was something like that. All right, um, moving on. That's upsetting. <laughs> uh, I want to get to this, and then we can do some consumer stuff. Uh, do you know this trend that's been going on for a while on TikTok called uh, NPC? You familiar with oh, this? Oh, my coworker told me about it the other day, and then showed me a video, and I just immediately wanted to kill myself. Correct. Is that where like the chat kind of dictates what the person does right. on camera? The person and sits there. Like it's, it's mostly stupid. it's mostly yeah. girls. There's some guys that are doing it, but it's mostly girls, and they just sit there and they kind of bounce it like this, like uh, like a, if you were playing a video game and your character's in the lobby waiting to play the game, they just kind of sit there and move. You know, they're right. they're jiggling for some reason, and these. People portray these NPCs. What, what is it called? Non-player, uh, non-player, non-player characters, characters. characters, right? But they sit there and wait. And when you put in um, like emojis, uh, these emojis, which cost money, by the way, it's not just like posting emojis from your phone. You have to buy these certain emojis that cost money, and those are the ones they react to, right? Uh, but they post there, and then all of a sudden they'll go, "Ooh, ice cream!" Nom 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 nom, like that, and you're like. What, what, what the fuck am I watching here? What is, what is going on? And then they're like, oh, Pepper, it's hot, 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 hot. It, it, it's just like they're retarded. So you're watching this and you go, this can't be real. And they're, there's, they're, their view count's really high. They're apparently making decent money from being complete mm-hmm. fucking idiots by doing this. Um, one of the most famous ones, I think they're crediting her for starting this trend, is a, someone called Pinky Doll. Sure. Blaming credit. So it is a uh, a black woman with blonde hair, and she has a bunch of these videos where she's reacting to the emojis. Um, I'm going to bring one up here so you can get an idea of the stuff that we're talking about and what she does. Right, do you right, think? Right. Do you think? Huh? Woo! Rug. 
Money gun, I got your name. Wow, a lot of gifts for you. Hee ha, yes, the guy feel like a cowgirl. I'm ready to. Oh, thank you, baby. This is so cute. Mmm, that was good. Coconut, yes, 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 yes. Bab, no. amazing. Meow, <laughs> meow, meow. Here. Yes, yes, yes. Mmm, ice cream, so good. Chula, chula. Money gun, I got your name. See? All right, well, I'll wow, just leave. No, for you. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, thank you, baby. This is so cute. Jesus Play, huh? So anyway, you get already, the point already, of, of what this know, is, what right? Say. So. You know, like she's just being. No, I don't get the point. It's a fucking nightmare of just people begging like a Black Mirror episode to get anyone to give them four cents so they don't have to get. I mean, I gotta say that is very frantic. Like just the the ability to move from one stream of consciousness to another as quickly as she's doing. I I give her all you know props for that, but Jesus Christ, I couldn't watch that. It's called mental detachment. Yeah, she's she's delusional. (laughs) I've never seen more people put in so much work to not work, like to do all of this stuff to get money so that they don't. I'm like, some women can just turn things on. They take bikini photos or they um, what's the one a haul where they try on different outfits and that's all it is. It's like, oh, here's me wearing this new skirt or this new tube top or here's me in a new bikini or here's a cocktail that's all they're doing it's not even anything nude it's implied sexiness and they make Mm -hmm. a ton of money from doing all this stuff there's then you see the other side of it where they're doing this npc stuff here and the amount of effort and mental anguish you're putting yourself through just to be on a screen like this and as emojis are coming up and you got to react like this she must be making some some good money, right? Because she's doing this and looking like an idiot. So what I don't get is why people are paying money for her to do this. Like that's I think you know what if you're gonna same get same reason money, we're watching money, it to be disgusted or make fun of it. Probably <laughs> it's just, it's honestly to me it's just it's like deeply unsettling always around that like one that people are paying money for this, but two that she's doing this to make money. Like both of those things like. Like just really kind of like hurt my soul in a way. Like, is this what we've come down to? Is this is this where well, humanity's go? What's it, what's it going to be in three right. years? Just people like, no, pfft, yeah, pfft, give me on a the, dollar, pfft, pfft, give me a dollar. Pfft. Like it's we're really on the deeper level. Idiotic. Yes, I'm on the again on the deeper level. If I am upset that she can make money this way. I I think I'm less upset that she's doing it because people are paying her. She's going to do it. You know, good. Get your cash. It's the idiots that are paying for this stuff that right. I'm actually very upset about. Like, why do you have this much disposable cash to make this woman do this? What are you getting out of this? Like, what do you, what, how does that make you feel to Money. watch this happen? And I'm just like, I, I don't I understand. I think mentality. it's like the same people who write like first on comments on like YouTube and shit like that. Yeah. They just want to be recognized. <laughs> right. Like, so if they put money in and they say, dude, they're like, that was a direct action of my money that made her do that. And I think people like that interactivity. Like they like it's to feel like endorphin they're controlling rush. the show. And I think that's what they like. And that's why people put money towards it. I don't know. That's, that the, only thing. Just... that's the only reason I could in my head, like rationalize why someone would want to do that. Other than like they're just stupid. <laughs> well, she's making money, and I apparently yeah. started this whole subculture of this NPC stuff because I've seen other people doing this. I only recently discovered her because of the news story we're about to get into. Um, but I think a lot of people are crediting this person here, this pinky doll, as being the one that kind of like her skin tone of her face doesn't match her body. She's patient zero. Got it. Filter makeup whatever you know yeah. so she's how doing long her thumbnail is the what look how long her thumbnail is it's like half the between her boob it's like the longest fingernail i've oh ever seen God. in my life those are the people who have those super long nails but when they try to tap on their phone they're doing this oh because they can't sounds. do anything with their nails all right so anyway so you see this this dummy here she's doing all of her stuff well what happens when you become internet famous, right? Everybody just starts digging into your life or anything you've ever done. They find every um, past account that you may have had. It's like, oh, you look at these. Uh, she had a live journal from 1999 with all her inner thoughts as uh, while she was 13. And somebody now made a website and a blog and posts all that. Like, it, it, There's no limit to what people go through with this. Stuff. Wait, are you saying someone's going to find my old Canadian boy band I used to be in? Right. Shit. Right. The Jordans? Sure. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Let's go to the mall. So they uh, put two. Ooh, is that on punk? <laughs> <laughs> right. I-, I would buy it. 
Uh, by the way, uh, for those of you uh, watching us live on YouTube and on Twitch, if you want to send super chats or bits with uh, some emojis, Giddles will act it out for you. So send in your super chats here and Giddles will be right on screen doing all of that for you for your dollars and cents or loonies. You're better off sending the frowny emoji and the shaking your head in disgust emoji. You'll definitely get that from him. Oh, I'll do that one for free. And at least $10. We're not doing, up, this, for, we're not doing this for $2 emotions. All right. Uh, so anyway, so they found out that Pinky Doll has another name, and really, she uh, another <laughs> stage Not her name. Christian name, and yes, Ms. Doll, Ms. Uh, Pinky Doll has a, another name. She also has an OnlyFans account. Of course, she uh, does. so uh, what is the emojis like on that page? <laughs> bunch of eggplants everywhere. But eggplants and poop emojis. <laughs> um, the uh, so she. Got some word that, uh, hey, I found a photo of your OnlyFans thing online, <laughs> and she got all upset. So she went on to the search engines, if you will, and I, uh, the reason why I'm saying that you'll, will become clear in a moment. She goes <laughs> on to the search engines and finds out that a lot of her stuff is everywhere. I so saw this video. She put out a this. she put out a reaction video here <laughs> that she is super pissed that people were leaking her stuff. Now, you could say rightfully so, but you could also say, hey, this comes with the territory of you putting out stuff on Pornhub, uh, on OnlyFans. What was the other the one? I keep forgetting fan something. Fansly. Fansly. Uh, yeah. Those kind of accounts. I think there's a, even another one now I started to see show up. There's another thing. But those are the, the, the main ones that people have subscription accounts for. So uh, this is her reaction video to finding out that people have put her stuff out online. Um, you, you're definitely going to want to listen to her. Should we have one out there? <laughs> listen to her vernacular here. Ready? Here we go. I went to Google. I put Pinky Doll naked and I click on pictures. And what I see, what I see, there's a lot of page. There's a lot of page. You keep swiping and swiping and swiping. It don't stop. It don't stop. And I see all this website. How dare you? You gonna let other people put my face, my body out state? here doing stuff like that? How dare you? We just asking an ID. Where's the ID terms? Tell me that. What's up? I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you something today. I'm gonna sue all of you. All of you are gonna sue you. I'm gonna sue you. Y'all wanna play with me? Y'all allow right, other people to sue us. Turn this off. Really? Cause you know you're about to get paid. Well, well, guess what? I'm about to get all that money. All that money. There you go. All that money. I love Local that you woman cut and figures like, out how the internet works. I just love how that video ended. The next thing was a guy holding the camera like this, so it looked like he was the one like backing up, like videotaping her while I she was getting really close with her. But Edward she went to Google. She went to Google. And like she's not based in the states, is she? Like she's I have no she's idea where she's based. She's Canadian live streamer. Tom. Canadian. What accent is that? Is she from like Quebec? Like is this a uh, Quebecois or whatever it is? Like this is like that like she, that main English is Cajun not her first accent. language. Accent like you ever hear that main Cajun accent like in Stephen King movies? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, like, that's yeah. not a real accent. You're like, oh fuck, that's crazy. That's a real accent. Uh, Garon T. Yeah. yeah. But look, this poor girl went on Google, and there's just many page, many page. It don't stop. You keep scrolling. All her photos. She's gonna sue all. She's gonna sue yeah, you all. Yeah, said. I thought she sounded Jamaican also. Like I thought so too. Jamaica. Apparently she's a Canadian uh, live streamer. Yeah, maybe not can, uh, from Canada originally. So I'm digging. Uh, you know, not Google deep, and though. everybody that uses Google is in for a rude awakening when she sues all of you for so many page of all her photo. Montreal. All her photo everywhere. I don't know. I've been to Montreal. That's not how people sound when I was there. Well, maybe if you go back and they do. They're all just acting to him. They're standing outside of Schwartz's looking at the meat sandwiches, just doing the nom, 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 nom. nom, nom, nom <laughs> it's like, how do we Thank get, you. how do we get past nom, nom, this? Nom, 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 nom. All right. Um, let's do some oh, consumer goodness. stuff here and then and take a break. Um, oh, she has a kid. I don't want to know any of this. I, I got to get off the internet. <laughs> It can't be a part of this. See, this is what I'm saying. This is why it's deeply upsetting. <clears throat> <laughs> she's got a kid. She's doing all the, like, just get a real job. She can't like. That's who's filming it. Like she's like, all right, now hold the camera. Most likely. Nom 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 nom. nom. Well, did you ever see that video where the, that like mom was in the car with her kid and like the, they like just put the pet down and then she was like trying to get the kid to like cry more, 
or like something like oh, that. It was, yeah, like, it was like a big controversy because she was just like using her kids for like viral videos. Like people are monsters. Parents are just the like George. He's like, just biting me. And you people gave me shit for years when I was shitting on parents for putting photos of their kids with the blackboards up on Facebook for, for I around never the first of shit. school all the time. Remember, Matt used to say, I don't see what the big deal is because he would do it with his kid, but he didn't do it to the... It was always like a hostage situation to me. Like, I, <laughs> I never want to see anyone holding up a thing with the date and the time on it because I'm just like, well, where do I, I find legit them? I legitimately sent one to Eric this year saying I'm one of those parents and it shows my son holding it and he's like he just like sent like a shaking head like a gif or something like that he was so upset the right. problem I had with it was one your kid doesn't want to do this two you a lot of these parents were so fucking stupid because they would fill out too much information on the blackboard saying oh here's the teacher's name here's the elementary school or junior high that they're going to so you're you're putting where the kid goes to school out on the internet thinking oh it's just for my friends but it doesn't work that way three Look, Eric, half the, hold on three half the time they're standing in front of their house where you're seeing the fucking house number so if you already know where the school is you can look for that house number it's like well there's only three blocks that have that house number so those kids and those people live somewhere in this area here you're outing your own personal information information for doing this shit and you look like a fucking idiot for doing it at all look, i only take one picture of my kid a year if he gets kidnapped that's what's got to go on the internet i can't have outdated shit that's what's so going that's on the, the one that's carton. going up there yes and that's the milk carton picture so at least it has all his stats right <laughs> but anyway um <clears throat> why was I, I i just wanted to yell i forgot why we were talking about this we were because we were talking about the npc girl in canada all right yeah and then we said I, she had kids and how horrible it was it is horrible yeah she's a horrible person i don't feel bad for her with. for i mean it, it sucks for her business plan for her stuff getting leaked out because but i mean go talk to lars with napster he can tell you you know it, it, we saw it happening 20 years ago and this is where the, the where the future was going with technology <clears throat> everything you put online eventually gets leaked somewhere um, but when you're making your money that look, everyone makes their money. Some are gamers. Some are doing other stupid things. Look, if you find a way to get money and people are going to pay you for it, God bless you. But you don't expect to be taken seriously in every other aspect of your life. If you're sitting there going, num, 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 ooh, hot, 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 or whatever that stuff is, I'm sure that'll get clipped and, and made a meme somewhere of me doing that. But have fun. I'm sure. With the I'm emojis right coming now. up on the side. <sighs> so terrible. So terrible. <laughs> Just, uh, I'm all new consumer, Eric. No, 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 no. I'm just dicks. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> Look at Tom. It's like for the blackboards. Here's authorized names that can pick up my child. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Put here's some of that. his favorite foods and his uh, height and blood type. Yeah. <laughs> I just put all what he's allergic to. So when someone does kidnap him, like, at least take care of him. Yeah. yeah. Like, here's all his shots to date and his dental records. This is what he likes and doesn't wow. like. How awkward would that be? Like kidnapper, like kidnaps a child, he gives him a peanut butter sandwich, he has an allergy attack, he got to drive him to the hospital. Ugh, what a nightmare! Right. You know, this was just supposed to be a simple uh, kidnapping. Now I got to deal with this shit. He's not breathing. I don't have health insurance. I, you know, how much this is going to cost me for ER fees? Don't yeah. you think you'd go to jail? Oh, that too. I didn't even think Why of do that. Why do you keep getting returned? More, it's Eric Nagel. It's Eric Nagel. Next. Eric Nagel. Follow the show on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube, and Facebook at It's Eric Nagel. We're back. Back with It's Eric Nagel. Segment two, everybody. Eric, Jordan, Ooh. Giddles, all here for you talking about. Ooh. There we go. Talking about all the stuff uh, with TV, movie, streaming updates, all that stuff that's going on or barely going on at this point because the strike is still going but normally it's all the stuff that's uh, going on we filter through it and recommend what to watch what not to watch because uh, people don't have time to deal with that stuff well we're gonna have plenty of time going into the fall and into the holiday <laughs> seasons because you're getting nothing they're not like I've heard from some people that this thing is going till the beginning of next year and it's because the studios are still not really looking to negotiate at can. all so this is going to suck not only for the people who are striking, trying to make liv livable wages and reasonable um, payments and stuff for their work, their royalties, their uh, <laughs> their likenesses, all of this stuff. It's going to suck for the studios because once they do get this done, it's still going to be at least a year or so before they start getting any work to put yeah. out there, to sell, to advertise to, whatever. And it's going to suck to us, the, uh, the viewers, the consumers, if you will, because... 
you're getting nothing. You're not even the. It's so fucking delayed and fucked up right now. You're not getting the summer blockbuster. Like it, I don't think movie seasons even matter anymore at this point now. Because you used to get a couple of uh, big movies like around Valentine's Day. Like, I think Deadpool started that whole trend yeah. about putting out a big movie or two around Valentine's Day, uh, Christmas you Day. Know, horror movies around for Valentine's, <laughs> like Scream Six or Scream Five or something well, like that. When they, my oh, buddy they Valentine, come in February now. that but my buddy Valentine, they released on Valentine's Day, and that wasn't a very good movie. <laughs> well, that's just good marketing. And a bad relationship. Mm-hmm. And a bad band, too. <laughs> um, yeah, but you're not getting holiday movies. You're not getting the big tentpole movie that they put out on Christmas Day. So when you're done and sick of your family or if you don't celebrate, you have a movie to go to on Christmas. Not Christmas Eve, Christmas night. Um, mm-hmm. That's not happening. You're not getting um, the fall blockbusters for Halloween, say, for November. Like the longest time. The longest time, like, remember, Will Smith used to start the summer season with the big, you know, you had the Men in Black, you had the Independence Day, Wild Wild West, all those movies. Like, you He had also a did start the Christmas the stuff, too. He had Ali released yeah. on Christmas Day. Like, he was one oh, of yeah. those movies that started that whole tradition of releasing a major movie, not just a movie, something new that, we, like, a lesser film that we needed to put out, a big right. movie to put out on Christmas Day. They would they started I feel that like Tom thing. Hanks was the same way. Yeah. Like it was just like we're at Christmas time and then summertime always started, you know, Thanksgiving, you know, have the big didn't, Christmas push. Didn't Malcolm X the, the <laughs> Denzel Washington movie wasn't that a Christmas release? I don't remember. I, th- I don't know. I, I might think be it wrong, all, but it all I thought happened it was. when it all happened when people were like, "You know what? We don't have to stay closed all of Christmas because not everyone celebrates when, Christmas. We can reopen and put out big things and make a lot of money." It wasn't even yeah. that. It's like, "Oh, there's a lot of people who don't celebrate Christmas because they don't companies didn't give a fuck about that. They started to realize the people who do celebrate Christmas started to lose the stigmatism that you have to stay with your family that day. All fucking day. So once or, or you're bored, like by 10 a.m., all the gifts are gone. Yeah, and, and Christmas crazy. is Let's like Thanksgiving. You're having dinner around 2 p.m. So by mm-hmm. four or five, your your day's done. So when they start, when that stigmatism started to break, where people weren't staying at their families for the entire day, they wanted to go out and do something. Then they they realized, oh shit. We can start putting out big movies on that day and actually get an audience. So yep. you're not getting Christmas movies. You're not getting winter movies. We don't have summer blockbuster movies. All the other stuff that was scheduled is now being moved off year to two years. You, for people who still watch television, you're not getting that either. There's no fall season. There's no spring season right now. And that's crucial to a lot of networks because they had to do up, upfronts in May, which didn't mm-hmm. happen. Because the strike happened, so they didn't do the upfronts, or if they whatever was available, they did some of the upfronts digitally, I guess, or or not with the big spectacle that they usually do. That's where you, the, a lot of the networks make a bulk of their money is the fall season pre, uh, preview for what's going to be laid out for the rest of the year, and they didn't have that, so everything's is all kinds of fucked as far as a uh, movie and and television entertainment. Uh, but there are some things that are available for you to check out. Uh, Jordan's going after the show tonight to go see Blue Beetle, the new DC superhero movie that no one seems to give a shit about. Yeah. um, Early, early reviews on it. And I hate, and I, we've talked about this. I hate looking at the reviews. I hate believing what everyone says because who cares about no one's ever right. Everyone's pissed off. But originally, like, the scores were bad, and then it shot up to, like, 80-something, and now it's sitting around 78. People are saying it's good. The problem I have with it, and I'm going to go see this movie because, you know, it's what you do. Um, I don't usually believe in an agenda when it comes to reviews. I like to think that we haven't tainted the review system, even though I know I'm wrong. But I have a very, you know, rose-colored glasses outlook on that. But right. when I look at the reviews for this movie, the first five, maybe six reviews, all they focused on was that he was Latino. It was a Latin character. It was Latin X. It was all about the Latin family. And I'm like, <laughs> but what about the movie? Like, your review is based off of culture and the character being Latino. Like, you've lost me. Like, I... It's almost like where it's like I don't feel like I can go see this movie and relate to it because I'm not Latino. Same way and it just it, it sucks when it comes to that stuff. Quick side note: Do does the Latin community really give a shit about the Latin X term? 
Is that just know. some kind of white person bullshit that they came up with that thinking that it's PC? Does do, do, so Has the Latin so, co- community embraced that X term? Because I don't so know. Here's the thing. Younger people have. Older Latino people have been convinced by right wing news that it's a way to take away that they're not Latinos. Yeah, it's like saying you there's live like in America, weird, you're American born, this, so Yeah, there's this like weird thing where <sighs> older Latinos literally think it's trying to erase Latin culture and then younger Latinos like completely embrace it. So it's just it's just generational divide. But I, so I, I, all right, past as, that, but the 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 whole thing with with Latin culture, Italian, French, German, a lot of the language is based on the gender preface it on like oh ending words with o and a meaning male and mm-hmm. female i saw and how it's you been those two letters <laughs> the what oh i, I, you I get you yeah letters. um <laughs> that was a very distinctive and one of the basic groundwork for learning those languages like they'd be work in this case latino latina that's just how those languages worked for long before we were ever here that seems to be erasing the identity in these languages. So when that X thing came around, I was I was trying to figure out is like, is that something they're really embracing? Because it seems that dissolves a lot of their culture, and not just the Latinos, but like I said, French, Italian, where it it it, it specifies the O and the A uh versions of how they uh, their language and how they communicate. So when that X thing came around, I'm like. Are they just erasing everything that they have and now everything just has to be completely neutral? I I'm not I don't understand it to this day. It it's basically the it's the Latin version of like using pronouns now. Like That's they them, he her. The and and, and, and Latinx her. what it does, yeah, Latinx erases the 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 gender binary of the language itself. Um, I'm reading here that in 2021, the League of United Latin American Citizens, the oldest Hispanic and Latino civil rights organization in the U.S., um, stated they will no longer use the term Latinx because they found it was offensive to some and failed to prove it had a wide acceptance. So basically, okay, some people so, were using it, but it wasn't widely used enough to be acceptable to the Latin American community. So they were saying, hey, we got to stop using this. Okay. The problem is I'm seeing it pop up in, in these reviews and I'm like, okay, so I guess Either some way are okay is fine. and some are not. Either way is fine. If the Latin community was embracing it because they weren't, that's their pro, uh, you know prerogative to do so. Fine. If they're disgracing it or they're they're saying we're not using this at all, that is fine too. As long as it was them making this decision, you know, as a as a uh, as a. But I think it was them making the decision, but based on like false information. But I it don't could know. It, be, it could like, also be old people didn't want to change this shit. They're like, but no, like, this is not how we grew up. We're not. We're not but that's doing like, this. But that's the same thing of people being like, well, why do I have to call him a she because she says that she's a she? That's that's all it is. That's that's this. That's literally the same thing. I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if it's on that level. I can see the where only, the, only, the only people I, I've ever, ever, ever in my life heard talking about it is people on a certain side of a political spectrum. And that's all I'm going to say. And like, I never. But that's what I but hear. You look at everything on, at a, on political spectrums. I'm talking about just like every day, like, you know, it could just but be I'm, old people I'm, don't I'm, accept it and they don't I'm, don't use but it. What I'm saying is the people that I know in my life who've ever talked about this are not Latino and they follow certain politics and they're the only people who ever bring this up like you're not latino why do you care i'm asking a question about it because it was in this statement on this it's not me bringing up the whole thing as as, what let's talk about latinx it's mentioned here and i'm asking a question i go i don't fully grasp this concept is this something they're embracing or is this something where at times shit through advertising through politics through whatever gets it forced onto a group or a collective or something where it's like now there's like oh this is how they think but it's not it was kind of labeled for them or forced upon them i'm trying to figure out because i know some you know variations of, of, of latino cuban mexican all that and i've never hear them use it so i I'm, i don't know where it stands and it's been around for a couple of years now some people use it a lot of people do don't they, so do i don't have know friend, but do they have friends who identify as latinx people like because if they're no if they don't then they're clue. not but, that, but that's what i'm saying if they don't they're not going to use it right like mm-hmm. you wouldn't use trans pronouns if you didn't like have around trans people you know what i mean it's like it's the same situation 
Look, like, I grew up in Southern California. No, one's a gender, one's a in, race. Yeah. yeah. But the Latin X is based on the gender because it's about the it's a, it's a I I don't under, like how the do language I itself this? is centered around gender binaryism. Like Correct. I get that. Yes. Um but it's being used as a wedge issue in a different way. It's not about the language. They're using it as saying it's about the language. I just I grew up in Southern California and then living here in Arizona, we have a huge Latino population and I don't think I've ever heard anyone use Latinx in any kind yeah. of sentence. Like, but then you I, it, see the not, press I'm not even trying to be political about it. It's just I've never heard it. You see then you see in, in certain press community. things like you were just reading. I, I saw something a while back we were yelling about John Leguizamo and he used um the Latinx term in for, for some of these things. But then I've seen other properties where they're talking about uh um books and movies and stuff and they say latino culture and they like so it's it's always different wherever i've oh mario lopez i see him on television when he's doing the the extra uh, no uh and the entertainment show i forget which one he's doing but you see i see it on nbc now and then and when he talks oh. about things going on there i think it was around when uh, wednesday was out with um what's her name who plays wednesday jenna uh, Jenny Ortega. Ortega. Jenna Ortega. We're talking about that, but you know, like he says, uh, Latino, Latina, all that stuff like that. So it's like it's always different in different places. It's different things. So I don't. I'm just trying to figure out where everybody lies on this. It doesn't matter what I th think on the fucking thing. I was just curious, people in those communities, what do they think about it? Like, where are they on that spectrum? Giddles is saying well, it, it might be, you know. I think it's very generational because I the soup kitchen I, I think so got a too. lot of like younger yeah. people and they have no issue with it. They said that their parents do because their parents just sit around watching Fox News all day and they think that and that's a, that's what they tell me. So like I'm just is saying, it, and then, but and is it I a Fox the same, News thing or is it generational? Because you know well, the yeah, Latino well, community is a very prideful about history and family and you know all that stuff to change how they grew up or how their abuela grew up and all this stuff. It is kind of it would be offensive, like not even but, trying to get into he, her, she, she, like all this stuff. It's just offensive as because yeah, I didn't uh, their I'm, culture. It breaks down to is like again, I don't know if it's like a political label influence, yeah. if it's a marketing label, if it's an advertising thing, if it's just something the news is using and expecting Here, everyone I will to adapt. Say that in this instance, in this review, mm -hmm. it is one hundred percent marketing to try and get people into this movie. Okay, that's what I will say because it sounds to me like. This whole movie, like from everything that I've read in the trailer that I saw, is just a lot of like, hey, check it out. We're like a Spanish family and we're superheroes. And I feel like that's just what the whole premise of the movie is. So I don't know. Okay. All right. I, you guys are having a fun conversation with Robin Chat, so I know you're not really paying attention. No, I'm paying attention no, no, no. to you. I'm, I just I'm looked down when you said that, and I'm I'm shocked to see what I'm seeing here. Um. The uh, yeah, all right. So uh, that is quite possible like, that it's, it's a marketing term. I think they're trying right to hit every key phrase they can because DC has not had a hit, and they no, need a and that, and point. You're right. That, and they're that's trying definitely... to get people into the seats. They'll be like, oh, Latino, Latinx, Latino, whatever we have to say to get you into the seat. It's like the uh, what's his name, fucking Joker. They're like, oh, uh, never mind. I don't Joker. Know what this. No, no, the Eddie Izzard joke when they're like, oh, and the Jesus and the cross, just whatever, just give me the candy. You know what I mean? Oh, like, I, I yeah, care, yeah, You know yeah. what I mean? It's just the same thing. Right. They're just throwing out keywords to try and get people into the seats to see this movie. Well, let me ask this then, Jordan, because you're more familiar. I, I know nothing about Blue Beetle uh, other than it's a DC character. I thought it was a That's car. It. Um, <laughs> this, this, the way they're marketing this now, did they lean more into the the Latin uh, influence culture of this movie because they haven't been able to do any other kind of marketing or, or have people going on talk shows and radio to promote the movie. They have no other ways of, of drawing up attention for this. Is it leaning towards that? Or has the story of of Blue Beetle always been very uh, Latin heavy that that's a big part of what the character is? I think the character itself is very Latin heavy. I just don't think anybody cares about this character. Like, that, that's I, that's, no, that's like, different. No, yeah. one, no one, no one cares about it. No one talks about it. So, I feel like they're playing it up to really try to get butts and seats, and you know, say, hey, look, we we got our you know our own Latino or Latinx or whatever you want to call them character on screen. Whether it's the first, you know, he's a, he's a headlining character. But what they've done is like, well, they have also leaned into he's got a big you know Mexican family. But, and he cannot he's got, lie, you know. Oh. He, Okay. Um, but I just I don't 
I, I hate when everything focuses on the one thing to draw up that attention. Like, I get it. This He's a Latin my... superhero. I get it. Tell me about the movie. Is it a good movie? Well, no. It's you know it plays so big on family and heritage and 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 depending on family and being Latino. And I'm like, but is it a good movie or are you giving it this score because it's it finally a Latino boxes. character? Yeah. Like, I don't like those kinds of reviews. Well, that's give a... me the bullet points. Don't give me the reason why you identify with this character as a Latino. You well, know what I mean? Is, like, well, this is what I like. You know, my my biggest issue with a lot of like the representation matters stuff, and it's like, and believe me, I am one hundred percent on board with that. Like, I one hundred percent believe representation does matter, it and it does. But when they try and force it and like shoehorn it in like this and be like, oh, this is us and this is our family and this is what we do because we're Spanish, right. like it feels yeah. so forced that like. It's just, I don't know. I mean, it they just, got George it, Lopez in a weird it, mullet in this movie. It just movie. doesn't like, feel authentic. It feels like they're trying to press all those buttons so right. that they could be like, look, we're doing what you want us to do. It does, and it could be what you said earlier. It could be a desperate, a desperate marketing move with this because they can't promote it any other way right now. They're, they yeah. have no way to get people to see this. Uh, on. There's no talk shows right now to promote can't. it. There's no... Um, daytime talk shows to promote it there's no uh, actors available to go and do any kind of promotion for all this stuff so they got to rely on uh, the trailer internet banner ads maybe some posters in some major cities but that's it they have nobody to generate any kind of attention or talking about it so it's like well you know what if this is all we got we got to lean heavy into this maybe that's the thing too for for these um unique times that the entertainment industry industry is in um i will compare it to marvel when they did uh ms marvel where the uh the girl and her family they're pakistan pakistani, pakistani. um <clears throat> they promoted it and it's like this is their first pakistani character but the story unveiled revealing more about the family their culture their life going back to mm -hmm. um i forgot what that that event is oh, called God, where they I separated know, I actually india. learned something watching that show. right <clears throat> where they separated india into pakistan after world war ii and all the turmoil and upheaval and all that stuff was going on so it was worked into the story it's but they had the two lemon trees and they wanted to separate them <laughs> jake harder boy as this, <laughs> right on that line to pakistan where they got nuclear <laughs> missiles facing this way and they're just shaking their fists wait yeah. give us back My our name tree is partition thank you bartholomew yes that's what i was trying to think of the uh, one partition, partition. Yeah, was going was down too. um you know, so that was a big historical moment and and the separating of cultures and and also religious factions moving the Muslim um, people into this area and then the Hindu people into that area. That became part of the, the culture and the story of the character and what have you. Um, it was also mentioned in the marketing, but it was also mentioned, hey, a new Marvel character, whatever. DC doesn't have that. So they got to lean into going hey latino people this is you no know, you, you, this is the guy you got to rally around and and i i'm guessing when now that think i'm thinking about him this giddles might be right this is more of a marketing thing well if you think of all the dc movies you had like the superman the wonder woman you had all these white i mean aquaman was a hawaiian but the character is white is this their version of like a Black Panther trying to get the cultural side of trying to get somebody? To come and that's see fine. It. There's nothing wrong with that because these characters no, existed all. in that in that capacity, you know, to to be represented and what have you. That's fine. It's not like the, hey, we're changing uh, Captain America to be, you know, Captain dressed up. <clears throat> that too uh you know <laughs> you're changing it just because we can change it you know now um well anthony what is anthony mackie's character's name falcon falcon no his oh, whatever you know who i'm talking about falcon is now the new captain america because chris evans is done and steve rogers yeah. is done so he took over the mantle it's not like they just changed the character to make it something different because that's the times now um uh, it's fine. I, I don't care that the, the, the character uh, is of Latin culture. That doesn't matter. It's, it's great they put it out there. What is unfortunate is no one gives a fuck about Blue Beetle. I, Nobody knows what Blue Beetle is even all about. And I legit thought it was a Transformers spinoff. I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm looked, not, saying, it, that, I'm I mean, not, not saying that as a joke. I'm saying that 100% I thought it was a Transformers spinoff. Right. Um, it was like a different version of the people Bumblebee. Brought you Bumblebee. This is and one of the. Way. This was Blue this Beetle. movie coming out had sp spawned some articles from legit publications that were 
that would be in the know of how film and, and uh, the movie industry work, they were saying this is probably the first movie that's going to come out to not make money at all. It's going to lose like a ton. And I, I read one article. I go, this seems like a really drastic exaggeration of it. But then when I saw two other prominent places and they were saying, yeah, there's no hope for financial recoup for anything for this movie. I went, oh, they would kind of know, you know, and that is really terrible for this. I don't know who's even playing the the blue, the, the blue beetle character, but to get uh, cast. It's the kid from um, Cobra Kai. His name is like the one who Solo fell off the Dwayne. stairs. Yeah, he's played. Oh wow, I didn't even know. Yeah, See, I didn't even movie. know that. No, I knew nothing about this movie. I, I feel bad Zolo for him. Maru Duena. Like, I think it's like pronounced Solo. So it's like because you would think, oh, getting cast in a superhero movie, Marvel mm-hmm. or DC, whatever. Even if it doesn't do that well, it's still in that in that property. He played in the NBC series Parenthood. Also, you could pretty much live a life being that character at conventions and and all kinds of things for the rest of your life and it's not going to be that way for this kid in this movie no it sucks like it's his big breakout movie role and uh and it's not even he has to shut his mouth and it's not even part of where dc's going now now they're like oh we just had to really release this but it doesn't count towards anything so it's just going to be a standalone film that no one gives a shit about and blue beetle like i just looked it up blue beetle was only created in 2006 so he's not like a really old oh he's not like a legacy character no he's not like a legacy character he was literally just created like less than 20 years ago well and then that does it does that mean that they wanted to get this movie out there because it's the only real latin character they could think of no, like that's the, that's they the just had thing. it on it's the like, slate and they had to get it out. They still have Aquaman 2 to get out. Oh, no, out. wait, sorry. Uh, uh, this character, the Spanish one, is the third the third version of it who was debuted in 2006. Gotcha. He was introduced in 1939 as Dan Garrett, who is a police officer who wow, fought it goes back that far. Games. Jeez. Yeah. And then 1964's, uh, he was played by an archaeologist also named Dan Garrett, and then they changed him into so a lot of white Irish people until it they retconned him to Jamie Reyes in 2006. Gotcha. And, and see, I'm only familiar story. with the Jamie Reyes one because of like various cartoons, Teen Titans, things yeah. like, you know, all those kinds of things. So, yeah, yeah, no. So it does go back. It's just the retcon version is new. Gotcha. So Jordan's going to see that movie after the we'll show. See, yeah. So let us know next week how, how it goes. Uh, stuff that we've been watching. Uh, if you guys have some suggestions, we'll get, uh, get those ready we'll do that in a second but i want to tell you about a couple things that i watched and i got to share this one i I put it up on all our social media stuff but a movie called the corner office starring john ham it's really good it feels corner office it's like if they made if they took some of the the thing behind the back rooms and mixed it into office space that's what this movie is yeah, uh, they're going to move your desk downstairs. Yeah, no, you're not. Like, don't do that. <laughs> That's, it's kind of what's going on here in some of these things. Um, John Hamm's in there. Um, the guy who, who plays, uh, what's his name? Danny Putty. He was in Community. Oh, yeah, I know who you're talking about. I forget his name. I think it is Danny Pudi. Pudi? You're thinking Pudi? of Ahmed. Ahmed. Or Abed, sorry. All right, so I had his real name, but the character's name uh, messed up. Uh, John Hamm's in there. Yeah, Danny Putty, Pooty, however you want to call him. Um, everybody else in the movie really isn't uh, of a namesake. So it's a movie, not a, like a series. No, it's a For movie. For some reason, I thought it was like a series. Okay. It's a movie. Um, it, it's really weird, too. The, uh, there's this one, the guy who plays the boss, he's in a lot of other movies. Uh, he's in, um, where did I see him? Like, he's in Peacemaker. If you if you saw that show, DC's Peacemaker, I, like I do like that show. Uh, he's the police captain or the the, the agent. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I, Christopher I, uh, Hairdall is his name. Yeah, Hairdall. Hairdall. If you see him, you'll know him. He's been in a lot of things. He was in Van he's Helsing. A big time, he was like, in um, character actor from like Canada. Yeah, but he's been in so many things. Like mm-hmm. he's very recognizable. Anyway, so. John Hamm uh, starts his this job uh, during the winter. You don't know where, but it's just this this eerie uh, corporate building, and he goes to his job every day. And then there is he finds that there's this office in the corner that nobody's using. So he goes and he ventures off into this office for a while and um, 
kind of like a get a, a, a new lease on life. You know, he's, he's trying to break out of his uh, his pattern of uh, being miserable and and nothing going well for him. He's very precise. He's a bit on the uh, the spectrum a little bit with his OCD, the way he, he functions and does things. And uh, I'll leave it there because anything else will will give away. But if you're looking for something different to watch, it's 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 labeled as a comedy, and there's a lot of comedic moments in it, but it's very dry, a very dry comedy. The way it hand John Hamm is fucking fantastic in this movie. So it's on Netflix. No, no, it's um, digital platforms right now. Oh, iTunes okay. and uh, Vudu. You have to rent it. I don't think it might be. I don't know if it's on a streaming platform right now. I just I got it off of uh, off of um, Vudu. Oh, okay. <clears throat> it was watching it there. But, uh, yeah, I can't recommend this movie enough. Uh, it's completely different. It's based on a, a book called The Room, not the movie The Room. Gotcha. But it's a, a based off a book called The Room. And uh, yeah, I think you'll like it, so go check that out. I also happened to watch that new Jennifer, Ani- uh, not Aniston, Jennifer Lawrence movie, No Hard Feelings, where she gets... About? So she sees it. She lives out in the Hamptons. And um, she's not like a rich person in the Hamptons. She's one of like her family's been in the Hamptons forever. So they got the smaller houses that haven't been bought up yet to make into, you know, massive mansions. And she works there. She works in uh, like the service industry. Her mom had died. Like a bartender or something, right? Her mom had died. She has the house and she needs money because her car got towed or, or repossessed or something like that. So she answers an ad that these parents put out about they need somebody to desperately date their son to get him out of his shell before he goes away to college at the end of the okay. summer. So she answers the ad and they promise her a car if she fulfills a certain amount of things that they want uh, to happen. And it's just her di- trying to date this kid, this really awkward fucking dorky kid. Um, there is a fight scene on the beach that I'll say is pretty fantastic. Did you see this movie, Jordan? Yes. Okay. And I know what fight scene you're talking about. <laughs> yes, it's pretty awesome. I don't know why she took this role, but I'm glad she did. And um, yeah, it's it's an interesting, quirky movie. Uh, her dad, uh, his dad is played by uh, Ferris Bueller. I'm forgetting his name. Matthew Broderick. And mm. then the mom <coughs> is from some TV commercial. Like she's one of those cell phone commercial ladies or something or... Uh, or a car commercial, one of the something like that. But uh, you see her and you go, "Oh, I've seen her in commercials." I don't know any of her acting, but I've seen her in commercials. Um, you should definitely check it out. That's funny. The girl that uh, plays the mom is Laura Benatti. She was actually, I think, during like the late night show run, she was the one impersonating Melania for like the longest time. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So, I'm aware of that. So check that one out, too. So there's two movies for you. Uh, third movie I want to recommend. I purposely did not watch it on streaming uh, because I wanted an actual physical copy. There's certain things I still buy physical copies for media for. And uh, it came earlier this week. And then I finally watched it. The brand new Venture Brothers movie. Ooh. Nice. Yeah. Uh, it's called Venture Brothers. Radiant, Radiant is the blood of the baboon heart. Such and a great it, title. It's such a great title. It is, uh, I think it's like 90 minutes. <coughs> How I many say seasons the screen... of the show was there? Was it five or six? Seven. Oh, geez. There's okay. seven. So I went on I to Voodoo. I stopped around five, so I have to catch up. So I went mm. on to Voodoo to uh, claim the digital copy, right? And then I see, uh, like, oh, it's seven seasons. Then there were two other specials that I were not was not aware of that they had put out. One's a Halloween special. Oh, interesting. And I forgot what the other one was, but they were on sale for two bucks on Voodoo, so I just bought all the specials. And the uh, screenshot you sent yesterday of uh, like the Zardoz. Oh yeah, that Zardoz made me laugh. I'm and like, okay, I have to watch. I the sent movie that now, so. for for uh, I sent that so that Giddles would see it when he woke up in the morning because Giddles oh, yeah, loves that. Zardoz. Zardoz was ridiculous. And I was looking for something that wouldn't ruin the movie, but there's a scene where that happened in the movie. It's yeah. so funny. And it, it's not ruining anything else, but he's in costume. There's the floating head. And then there's <laughs> Hank Venture just looking up at the sky as right. Um, what's the uh, the mentalist guy's name? 
I'm forgetting, but the mentalist that's in Venture Brothers, I know what you're talking about, yeah. uh, he's dressed up in the Sean Connery outfit as the floating heads coming down. It's I will. So I'll give you one minor spoiler. At one point, he uh, he's hacking. He coughs up a gun. So well, ultimately, you have to. Like, you can't have the floating head from Zardoz and not have a gun fly out of its mouth. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So. Isn't like the gun is the penis. Yeah. The gun so, is good. The penis is evil. If you're looking for, if you were, if you've never seen Venture Brothers, what, if you're looking, I saw Tom from Alberta in, in there. He's, he wants a list of some stuff to watch. If you've never seen Venture Brothers, watch that entire series. It is oh, man, it's so. Good. Don't let it be, really that the good. fact that it's a cartoon uh, discourage you or throw you off from it. It is so well written. It is mm-hmm. such adult content. Like there's, you'll no- find a new joke every time you rewatch an episode. Mm-hmm. Like I still find jokes. I'm like, oh fuck, how did I miss that? Like ten years ago. It's, like there's it's so much. It's based off of, or at least it's spoofed off of, uh, the old Johnny Quest cartoon mm-hmm. series and and the I don't know who owns Johnny Quest that might be another Hanna Barbera thing the characters around that time a lot of this is spoofed off so much so that in later seasons those characters show up in the show the original ones that they're based on <laughs> showed up I think like Johnny Quest had like a, a fucking meth problem or something and then his Hindu That's friend uh, Haji Haji also had like some kind of he was a billionaire tech guru or something like that. Like it's just these weird scenarios. Um, So if you're looking for something good to watch, definitely watch, uh, watch that. I mean, you've got characters in it like uh, Molotov, uh, Molotov cocktees. Like, come on. Like that's just the greatest character name. All the phantom limb and uh, Brown, Brown with the guild of calamitous intent. (laughs) Yeah. Guild of calamitous intent. Sergeant hatred. Killinger. Mm-hmm. When you meet Sergeant Ignore Hatred, me. he was like a white supremacist, just Princess giant. Tiny. Yeah, he's this giant white supremacist guy with an army helmet and face paint, and he was obsessed with, like, he had a mar- um, Princess uh, Tiny Feet. Yeah, it was it. It, uh, it was like a like a Pocahontas style character, a, a Native mm-hmm. American, where her legs were always bound because she has really tiny feet, and he was worshiping her tiny feet. And then one day she wised up and left him, and it's ruined him for the entire series that she left him for some for a better life. Well, because he, he had like got... a, a toe fetish, because he would always just look at her toes. He'd be like, "Oh, look at them! They're like <laughs> so little corn kernels," and he just uh, like sal- salivating over them. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's kind of gross. I might give I might give Venture Brothers another I, rewatch. Just do again. a rewatch. Yeah, I'll do it with so you. That's, that's, that that's road fun. that alien that shows up. Ignore me! He's just screaming while the things are going on. And nobody me. ever acknowledges him. Uh, so so much fun. Uh, we because we've talked about uh, the animated show Harley Quinn many many times. That yes, is that is so a close good. comparison to Venture Brothers. The way it's written, the style of the animation. Yeah, um, it's pretty like, damn it's, close. It's like joke a minute. So when you rewatch it, you'll catch something new, yep. and it's it's very very uh, smart with the dialogue. So, yeah. Bartholomew, love the two monarch henchmen arguing about how Smurfs have to be insectoso- yeah. insectoids because uh, it's one female servicing the entire group. <laughs> <laughs> no, that whole episode where they're pulling up and they're doing the song, like, dun, 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 and they're like getting, like picking them up in the car. Oh, it's so fucking good. And the one guy sounds like Ray Romano. He's like, no, we're not doing oh, this. No, we can't do this. We don't have proper ammunition. Yeah. Oh, he's gonna be mad. He's gonna be mad now. Why do I always keep you two around? (laughs) Yeah, Frankie Bronson. People hyped Rick and um, Morty, not Marty. uh, Well, yeah, trash the wrong show. Well, yeah, he watched the dollar store version of it. That's Rick and Morty has a lot of genius concepts in there. A lot of the episodes. Dick and Marty. Yeah, give it give it a watch. You got to be a a bit open minded to it. All right, moving on to other movie news stuff. Uh, Like we said, the strike is still going on. Um, what was this headline that you hear? Uh, the, the Writers Guild and the AMPTP meet again. CEOs to talk this Friday about a path to ending the strike. <clears throat> we'll see if that even happens. It's still not looking good. Uh, Tron Three. I had no idea they were making a Tron Three, but they apparently a Tron they were making a Tron Three. And here was the problem because uh, that guy I can't stand was the being cast in the lead. It's Jared Leto. Jared Leto. Thank you. Yep. Um, that's annoying. I hated him so much I forgot his name. Jared Leto uh, was supposed to be the lead on this. But uh, it was called Tron Ares. And the director 
uh, said that the filming for the upcoming sequel has been delayed indefinitely, opening up over 150 layoffs as well. The movie is a uh, is subsequently <clears throat> about AI and what it means and takes to be a human being. Um, I guess topical, but they've ruined the, the Tron franchise with as much shit as they've been doing because who the fuck cares? So... Uh, that movie's not happening anymore. Now, the other thing that's been going on is uh, we were talking about Blue Beetle and some of these reviews were saying that this movie is going to not make money. We're, li- we're moving into a time now where a lot of these blockbuster, f- or we have been moving into a time where a lot of these blockbuster films, franchises are dead on arrival before they even come out. Like oh, yeah. people were excited. Then all of a sudden, nobody's excited about any of this stuff anymore. And then it, it's already leading into before it opens that people are just like, nope, not, don't give a fuck. Not going to see this anymore. So you get movies that are kind of DOA as they're being launched that weekend and they're not making the money that they're supposed to. <clears throat> a lot of it is because of bloated budgets. You know, production budgets are one thing. But then for some reason, the math equivalent in Hollywood is. Oh, this movie costs fifty million dollars to make. All right, we need to spend sixty million in order to market and promote it. So it's like, well, wait, we made seventy million dollars. We made the budget back and everything. No, well, we didn't pay off the marketing, so this was a complete flop and a loss. Like the marketing has gotten way out of hand. We've known that for for the last two decades now that it, it it's been terrible. So uh, movies like Fast X will make a minimal profit despite its seven hundred and four million dollar box office gross because of uh, <clears throat> all this fucking CGI and special effects. There was a massive um, cast for that movie and yeah. uh, all the high production costs. So it's barely making any money. Um, yeah, it's $704 million places in the fourth highest grossing movie of 2023, but it's large budget of $340 million. Jesus prevents it from making any profit compared to other major franchise films released in 2023 fast x box office fate is relatively better as the titles like mission impossible 7 and indiana jones 5 are expected to lose a lot of money now indiana jones 5 was expect is now saying it's looking to lose a hundred million dollars for disney such a bummer right it's indiana jones like i didn't hate the movie but did people, like, it was actually fun but- did people want it though? Like after Crystal no, no Skull, one wants that, that's what I'm saying though. Like after Crystal Skull, they didn't read the fucking room and been like, let's just let this go. Like they said, no, that was just a one off <clears throat> bad one. Nostalgia's still in. Let's make it and spend it. And, and that's why it flopped. Like no one wanted it. Uh, with <clears throat> For Indiana Jones 5, <clears throat> Dial of Destiny, uh, with a production budget of three hundred million and a marketing budget of one hundred million, yeah. the film's mm-hmm. box office haul of three hundred and seventy-five million is considered um, a poor result. Yeah, no shit. That's the. <laughs> There's so many questions. Like Gittles is right. Did people want this? Some people did, but were people I, I think clamoring people are for tired of sequels? The marketing is way out of hand you know the cost for marketing is is completely ridiculous to do any of this shit anymore there's a lot of smaller budgets and smaller independent films have found great ways to market their movie and and be a complete success by not having to have billboards on sunset strip in and in times square uh having their uh, characters uh, the lead characters going out on um colbert and fallon and all that they found other ways with the internet and apps and and uh, other kind of uh, viral moments to push these movies through that these major companies don't seem to like they know they want to do it, but it just doesn't seem to work for them. That well, and that Barbenheimer thing. That, <laughs> sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say, like these movies also are. Uh, we have now created a culture where every major actor demands the biggest paychecks ever. Well, yeah, it's the same thing with like sports, where it's like, hey, I got it, a hundred million dollars to make this movie. Well, that's already a third of the production. You know what I mean? Like. I guarantee you a lot of it goes to paying a Harrison Ford or a Tom Cruise or things like that. Like, Music rights right. and, you know, there's so many... There's yeah, so it's just, it, gets, it gets inflated effects. for that. So, I don't know. Well, um, like the Barbenheimer thing, right, really helped push both of those movies into some weird portion of the lexicon and, and viral media. 
But that wasn't the studio that came up with it. Neither no. one of those uh, were, were both under Warner Brothers or just the, yeah, the Barbie. So. They're both under Warner Brothers. So it wasn't the studio that came up with it. This was just people online and it just happened to hit for, for no reason, real, really, other than it, it just hit. You know, it, it worked this time around. They can't figure this shit out. So they spend all this money. It's like, oh, we got to spend more money, get it out of more place. All those posters, you know what? Those posters on the subways, on the side of buses, are more effective than all the other shit that they've been wasting their money on trying to do. I see posters more than I see trailers. Right. All right. Uh, moving on. Uh, Barbie surpasses Dark Knight as Warner Brothers' highest grossing domestic release in its entire history of mm-hmm. the of the uh, studio. 537.5 million at the domestic box office. Over That's a the billion. Domestic. It's not even worldwide. Yeah, over a billion for the global box office mixed in. And it's not even out of theaters yet. Like it, it's it, going to be um, on streaming in like a week. So they're going to. Yeah, Dark Knight. Oh, they, they announced that already? Yeah, Barbie's uh, I think September. Streaming. Or very, very soon. Same yeah, with well, Oppenheimer? Because yeah, like like I'm half. not going to the theater to see it. I'll, I'll wait. Uh, I think Oppenheimer is going to try to stick it out a little longer because they actually extended the uh, the IMAX run by like two weeks. Okay, that, that, so that, I guess that makes sense. So that'll probably be a little later. Um, Barbie is still in theaters, probably going to be hitting streaming, I think, the first or second week of September. Right. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's in theaters still, and people are still going to go see it. So I, it, that 537 is going to go up. So And that, and like you said, and like I said, it's just – that's the domestic box. So that's just the U.S. Right. So it's pretty crazy how that has destroyed the box office. So good for it. I mean, it was a fun movie. Uh, Apple TV shows stills from Monarch Legacy of Monsters. No release for the 10 episode <laughs> series. So this is not tied into the movie franchise? No. So um, this new series is going to take place after the 2014 Godzilla movie. So, um, you know, Godzilla destroys San Francisco. Um, but what it's going to do is it's going to tell the history of Monarch, the corporation dealing with all these monsters from like the 50s and how it starts to up to this 2014 time frame. Right. Um, and what's going to happen is that they're going to focus on two different um, time periods. And the cool thing about it is this one character, um, Lee Shaw, is going to be played by Kurt Russell. And that's going to be the around now time frame. Okay. But the early 1950s version of that character is going to be played by his son, Wyatt Russell. So you're going to have that same character though? in his face. Same character, it's just, just different, different time periods. Okay, that, yeah. that works. So his son is going to play the younger version of him um, after the 2014 movie. So uh, my problem <clears throat> with a lot of this Godzilla stuff and these monster movie things is that they keep making too much of a big deal about the human fucking story mm-hmm. with this. It's like, well, we got to have the government. You know, look. You have the military move the monsters into place for the big battles and, and all that stuff. I get that. You need some setup. You have scientists have something that went wrong or one gets kidnapped and this uh, terrorist organization or evil, you know, Bond villain style operation is like, you need right. to create this thing to fight that monster or we need to steal the DNA from this. I get those things need to be there to move the story around and be, be part of it. But then the rest of it, like, I got to rescue my daughter or my daughter's learning to communicate with one. None of that or, or, or any kind of love story. You don't need get the you need the humans to start it off and get the monsters into place and then move them away and let it just fucking be 40 minutes of them destroying shit and fighting each other or or whatever it's going to be. Get rid of a lot of the human story on this. Stuff. And they keep adding more and more. <laughs> The only it's human the story in these movies should be how much humans Godzilla is scraping off the bottom of his foot every day. Like, that's all <laughs> I, I agree. want. Like, him going to his shoe store, ordering, like, human foot scraper off Wish.com and getting the wrong thing. Like, that's what, like, we need more of the Godzilla. Like, just... I, it's the humans. same problem Transformers has, too. Like, I don't care about the human <laughs> characters. Give me the robots. Give me robots fighting. I'm good with it. It's the same with these monster movies. Give me just robots and dinosaurs and monsters and let them fight. I want to see them destroy some cities. <laughs> I need to chin a little midget Chinese women. I love those scenes where Mothra, Godzilla's got a, a monster on the ground and he's stepping like on the neck of one of them and then pulls right. the mouth open and then shoots the flames into the head. Yeah. Oh. And, and, like, do okay. more of that. Destroy buildings. Destroy aircraft carriers. Yeah. Rip monsters out of the sky and just throw them around and beat the shit out of them. If you had that, <laughs> like the first 30 minutes 
is getting everything into position and then it's just 70 minutes of monsters kicking the shit out of each other it'll be movie of the year but they mm-hmm. never do it they got to keep adding well we need some kind of story that relates to humanity you know or or uh you know um the global climate issues or you know the geopolitical situations going on right now we got to bring all this stuff no you don't no you don't I mean, if you if you think about it the japanese ones were born of the atomic age so i mean they still tackled those issues but they did it in a better way where it's like they didn't just beat it over your head like they addressed it but then the rest of the movie was monsters beating the hell out of each other so right. they're just not subtle with it anymore like it's just they have to make sure you understand that this is what we're doing and then you might get a monster fight so well, <laughs> i always have high hopes for all the godzilla stuff i love godzilla i, I want love- the new japanese one that looks so good <laughs> I had high hopes for that Kong versus Godzilla, and it was fine. And then they're like, oh, Mecha Godzilla's in it. All right, great. Ugh. You don't need Mecha Godzilla to look like this. Oh, it was so bad. It looks like a giant crocodile. <laughs> is that a Funko? Yeah, this is yeah. a Funko. You don't need it to look like this. Make the Mecha Godzilla look like the cornball 60s, 70s Mecha, Mecha Godzilla, where it just looks like the, the really awesome. Metal Godzilla? <laughs> yeah, it looks like the off-putting dinosaur style, not making him like when they made the American Godzilla, he's like, no, he's got to be authentic. He looks like he evolved from this lizard. And this is no, this is how he would really look if he was that. No one liked it. The story sucked. They didn't like how Godzilla looked because it wasn't the Godzilla that we knew. That exaggerated, ridiculous looking dinosaur nuclear creation is what people love stop trying to all oh, the d- lizard would look like this if it was this big no one gave a fuck about that you made this thing look like a giant alligator nobody cared about it you ruined mecha godzilla if you would have made this really weird out of proportion looking thing you go i'm all about that i want to see him kick the shit out of godzilla now i want to see godzilla kick the shit out of this as soon as you saw it all you were hoping is like just destroy the robot and end the movie <laughs> I'm I'm kind of done already. Done. I'm so pissed off with it. Oh, so dumb, so dumb. Yeah, I see in the chat here. Uh, you you seem to like the rubber suits or miniatures uh, opposed to the modern CGI. CGI. I I don't I hate CGI. I don't hate CGI. I just when they change the the appearance of something just to say no, it looks more realistic. Godzilla's not meant to look realistic. Mecha Godzilla is not meant can, to be accurately looking like some kind of dinosaur that existed on you this do planet. Both, though Shin Godzilla was practical and it had some CGI, but Shin Godzilla was awesome. Shin Godzilla was awesome. Gittles, did you see Shin Godzilla? I did not see Shin Godzilla. You would actually like oh, that one, I think. Shin Godzilla. It's great. not all the other <laughs> craziness from the other Godzilla movies. It's pretty. It's still exaggerated, but you could look at it and go, "I could kind of see this happening." Like this could know, be I, possible. Like I'm like for me with Godzilla, it's like I could watch him destroy a couple buildings, but I, I get really bored really fast with that kind of stuff. Like I didn't mind um, what was it, uh, Pacific Rim, because it was just like it was a little different. That's Ten years old, by the way. Yeah, I know, but like it was like a little <laughs> different. But like Godzilla, I'm like I can only I can only do so much. And I think it's like you guys said, like the human story is just it drags it out of me every time, and I don't care and I don't yep. want to watch it. So because I don't want to I don't want to go into it and sit there, especially if the movie is going to be like two hours or something like that, because I know it's going to be an hour and 15 minutes of stupid dialogue that I don't care about. Yeah, I get it. I get it. All right. Um, Let's wrap this up here Uh, next week. If you're a Star Wars fan, the brand new series Ashka (laughs) or Asaka, how do you say it? Ahsoka. Ahsoka is coming out. I've been following petitions about that online all day. What now? What? I'm just kidding. Oh we no! Not because we talked about it earlier about how people. I legitimately about thought you were show. really being like pissy about it. I'm like Jesus Christ! Yeah, see, that's what you believe me on. Uh, it's that's coming out August one. 23rd on Disney Plus. Uh, what else do we have coming out here? Uh, they just announced. They put little teasers out for those of you who like American Horror Story. This sh- the series is still going. So you have another Jeez, season coming out on September 20th called American Horror Story Delicate Part 1. So that probably means like six episodes and then you get another six episodes after the new year or something. Uh, but the I'll cast like is wait, Emma Roberts. Strikes. Kim Kardashian Ugh, is one right, of the leads that in this. Uh, that gir- for her acting. There's this uh, actress or 
person named Cara Delevingne. I don't know how to say Cara Delevingne. She's Cara actually Delevingne. like she's been in a bunch of stuff. But all I know her she's for is, is constantly on social media where she's been fighting with like Selena Gomez and Miley Cyrus and all like that. She's just this girl that dates these popular actresses and and singers, and then all of a sudden has a big fight with them, and they all hate her. So that's all I ever see <laughs> on, the, on, on uh, TMZ and stuff. Uh, and Zachary Quinto from Heroes, Spock in some movies. Yep. Uh, he's part of that as well. Uh, Gal Gadot is the Wicked Queen in Snow White. I don't understand why. Right. Because the whole premise of the of the Wicked Queen in Snow White is that she's jealous of Snow White's beauty. So you got Gal you Gadot. Put a side to side, like, mm. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make any fucking sense. So. Uh, whatever. Uh, also out now for video game fans, uh, Red Dead Redemption and Undead Nightmare, which was the DLC content. It's all out right now. It's available on the Switch and uh, the Switch. modern PlayStation systems. No other updates. It's just porting it over to make it available on those platforms. Nothing new, nothing added. It's just, yeah. it is what it is. And uh, b- 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 I don't think George we have anything stop. else, right? Is there anything else that we're forgetting here? Um, the only thing I have oh, is Archer. that... Um, Archer, uh, August 30th. Yeah. Uh, they said season 14 is the final season, but they said that after Jessica Walters died, and here we are with another season. So, um, Archer, season 14 on FXX on Hulu, August 30th. Go ahead. And I know this one's a big one for everybody. Um, November 17th, Netflix, Scott Pilgrim animated series is uh, yeah. coming out. With original movie cat, everyone... <laughs> character and voice form. We'll it's watch that awesome. next week. Uh, I'm yep. not. It looks anime. Well, that's kind of the point. <sighs> I, I mean, I know it was. I remember the. <laughs> I loved the movie. I know it was very video game influenced, and there was you know a lot of that Japanese well, comic books culture. were that way too. Yeah. The comics are drawn the same way. Big eyes, very. Oh, I didn't know that yeah. the original comics for Scott Pilgrim were drawn mm-hmm. that way. It looks exactly oh, yeah, it the same. All, it was all anime. Oh, okay. Then mm-hmm. what do I know? All right, fine. It was based on a uh, Japanese like manga. All right. Well, that's coming out. We'll watch that trailer next week. All right. We do need to get out of here. We need to do the plugs. Jordan, our nation's <laughs> eyes turn to you. I do another show. It's a movie podcast called You all Do? Later podcast. You're fired. I do. I've been moonlighting on the side. Um, come check us out at Watch Later Pod on Instagram. Um, this weekend we're doing our snack show, so we're gonna have a lot of fun snacks. We're gonna try the red vines again. We got all kinds of Canadian snacks, and <laughs> I don't know. We're still looking. We might have some more stuff. But you're then, still uh, looking up at yeah, the screen. And, Your camera was frozen, but there you are. Now we see you. Um, but yeah, come check us out. All right, Gittles, what do you have? Uh, Giddle Base on the Instagram, twitch.tv slash Giddle Base, and uh, that's about it. Nothing else, really. All right. Uh, for me, you can follow <laughs> us across the board on all the social medias at It's Eric Nagel. If you're listening to us on the iHeartRadio app, we do appreciate that. Uh, shows available on demand on Apple and Spotify, anywhere pretty much you can get a podcast. But if you're on one of those two platforms, if you do us a kindness and go over there and give us a uh, give us a good review, it does help out the program. And we would be for your bestest friend forever, ever, 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 and ever. Uh, if you're listening to the audio version and you want to see the video version of the show, you can join us live each and every week in our YouTube and Twitch rooms, both under the handle It's Eric Nagel. And if uh, you're listening on demand, you want to see the video, that's available usually the next day or so up on our YouTube channel so you can uh, watch what you missed there. And I think that's it. We covered everything, right? Real good. I think we have literally covered everything. All right. So we will get out of here until next time. Uh, What do I say? Why am I forgetting? Be. No, that's you. (laughs) Till the next time, that's Jordan. You go. Be (laughs) be excellent to each other. TV shows. And we'll be seeing you. (laughs) He's Eric Nagel. If you let them have me, I'm as good as dead. You know that. I know. Goodbye, old friend. Goodbye, Eric. Alas, we're out of time. Follow It's Eric Nagel on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. For ways to listen to the show, go to itsericnagel.com. And remember to tell two friends so they can tell two friends. And they can tell two friends. And they can tell two friends. friends. And those two friends can tell two friends. Well, you get the idea. Keep it real, homies. 